Radiant team ban. I have seen Rubik 5 do okay. I think it, it, it for me it's a personal preference because a 5 is supposed to secure the lane and I find it difficult for Rubik a lot of the time to secure a lane against really anything. Right? Like how often do you feel like, yeah, I'm really bullying this guy as my Rubik. Just doesn't, you know, it doesn't hit right for me. That only happens when he's got some Five sort of pairing remaining. where you can like combo the telekinesis into like a centaur combo or something. Yeah, like, high damage a... or stuns. Yeah. What you want. So he has some setup, but you're right. Uh, alone, just the lone Rubik, he, he's not so much of a bully. That's definitely yeah. true. He does pair well, though, with Beast. So I, because Beast is such a, an oppressive laner that even if the Rubik doesn't offer a lot on his own, he's very good at just standing behind a strong hero and helping him whenever, you know, the help is necessary. And he can also do things like block pulls uh, very, very easily with Fade Bolt. So I think four is fine. This will most likely be our five here from Khan and the Venge. This is a pretty gnarly Rubik, uh, sorry, Void game, if I'm being honest. Okay, they do go Witch Doctor. I kind of thought right. they might. Um, mainly because you have to worry about your chrono getting stolen. You have to be very good about hitting time dilation as soon as you chrono, like every time. If you don't, it can be very dangerous. Uh, for your team, there's already a defensive swap. There's BKB piercing stun. Ten I think it's going to be a rough void game. So I'm, I'm kind of curious as to how Cyber Legacy are going to... Five seconds remaining. They, first off, they need chrono synergy. Like, they have none right now. It's basically, like, I don't know if this is a core tiny or a support tiny or what their game plan is uh, with it with just these heroes, but they, they need something to put into the, the bubble that's going to feel strong. Yeah, definitely. Could be Invoker game, actually. Could look out for that for Cyber Legacy. There's no backline uh, catch right now for Khan. So they could, like, aggro swap, but that's about it. And then you want, like, a blank on your beast if you want any backline kind of catch, and he might just go for, like, the book... Uh, book build and just go for, you know, big damage, big push. A lot of Beastmasters are skipping Blink nowadays unless they really, really need it, so. I've noticed that. It's kind of strange. We've seen a lot of heroes that used to go just straight for Blink Dagger, now looking at alternatives, like Slardars, a lot of games, they don't rush the Blink. Bat Rider, the other big example. BOTs now taking that slot. Yeah, I think it's primarily because you just pick a hero to solve the catch problem, right? Like, you... Five if you have to itemize in a way that detracts from the strength of your hero, which I feel like buying Blink on Beastmaster does that, because you want to be a frontliner, and you also want to deal a huge amount of damage, and you lose a lot of that potential when you're investing, you know, 2200 gold on an item that really only gives you mobility. Now you give vision to your team, you push really hard, you're beefy, you have BKB piercing stun, and back in the day, Blink was great because you could just solo kill heroes, but most of the time, that's not going to happen anymore. Oh, they ban Invoker themselves. Huh, okay. Very clearly don't want it. I thought it would be a great pickup, but okay. So Darkseer and TB, uh, the DS is good synergy with the Void. It does offer damage inside of the Chrono. The Witch Doctor uh, does as well with the Maledict and um, the, the Death Ward as well. So they do have some damage to throw inside of it. I do like Darkseer a lot against TB because you you basically cannot die to this Five hero unless you make a mistake, remaining. right? Like you surge away from him. He is fast, but he's not faster than surge. You can push the lane. Uh, they have no way of really killing the, the ion shell creep quickly unless meta is up and you're not really going to want a meta for like, you know, one or one or two waves. Um, so I don't know. I, I like this pick here from Cyber Legacy. I'm still waiting for that, that hero that really makes me believe in this lineup. Because right now, I think what Khan are bringing, like, they don't have a lot of deep push, which could be a problem because they are playing against a Darkseer. Uh, wave clear is, is definitely going to be a concern for them. But I think that their their lineup doesn't really run into the same problem of if we don't have Chrono, it's very hard for us to play. So I'm hoping the last hero kind of solves that issue a bit. Well, they've got plenty of time to think about it. Hundred. It could be actually, it could be tiny mid. If it's tiny mid, then they have tempo and that's fine. Remaining. Uh, I have not seen the tiny mid much. Five yeah, we saw it uh, actually last series. Yeah, the one that Cinder and Sunspan cast it. There was a mid tiny. Okay. And Sumail has been Pugna. spamming it. Okay, Pugna, no, it's going to be a good. mid Pugna. That I like a, this a lot. That's a super good pick, actually. Big. Thing. Very good. Yeah, big counter against Roar. There's a lot of physical damage dealers on Khan. Not really any magical burst. So Decrep is going to be a very potent save ability in this game. Remaining. And obviously you can like life train and stuff. Um, Five it's, I think it's remaining. mostly just for the fact that it does give them some semblance of siege. Up until this point, they had no hero that really threatens buildings whatsoever. 
the Beastmaster, they do have Witch Doctor, which is nice. It's good at stunning the boars, the creeps, or whatever, the necro minions. Um, but they didn't have anything to really deal with the roar itself. And now they do, as long as he's not the one getting roared out of That Pugna, like, weirdly dynamic in that way. He does so yeah. much damage, he's so good at taking objectives, but he also has that nice little save for you. So, uh, support Tiny. All right, what do Khan want? They've decided it's you the Queen of Pain, so they're going to go hero. pretty classic here. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not... You know, I, I actually like both drafts here. They're, they're very different. They have different merits. Yeah, I do too. Um, but they both have strengths. You know, like, I don't think this is a, an outdraft at all. This is going to be all down to the execution, execution, which makes me really excited. If I had to favor one side, I would favor Khan, just because I think if the game goes too late, they will simply not have damage to kill Terrorblade. Like, once Terrorblade B gets BKB, if the Void can't kill him in a Chrono, there's going to be a huge issue, and there's also a save. So when I when I look at lineups like this, and like you're saying, it, it is pretty even. Um, I'm just saying that if you think the draft is even, try to think about how the cores play the game. And whoever has the more difficult game is usually the one at a disadvantage in terms of like hero matchups. So if, if the void chronos, it'd be annoying. You can still Five get roared. You know, if, if it's TB and he has a BKB, you are basically all of the damage in that sphere minus like death ward, which doesn't sound that great considering TB has like 40 armor. Yeah. So that's the that's the point where i'm looking at it and i'm going if i had to pick i would say con because i think the tv will have an easier time playing the mid late game but okay. obviously anything can happen so we'll see what happens if the lanes are, are good for cyber legacy i can definitely see them kind of you know rolling it a bit they're gonna have a, an ion shell surge tiny exactly a good tower it's tower a lot killer. of little things like i love how the yeah. dark seer enables tiny for that extra push so big num can actually find solo kills same with the void as you mentioned it actually gives void like the ability to threaten kills with chrono early on while he's still in farming mode because he's got that extra damage um and i i just like pugna a lot i i might be a little biased because i think pugna is a bit under loved right now and i i think he can be so annoying against these heroes like terrible like yeah when he gets bkb decrep won't be a, a factor anymore but it's still like it's a tool that really screws up the cadence of what terrible wants to do in fights yeah he will have the issue not even of just being self decrept, but defensive decrept is going to be super annoying because the only yeah. dispel they're going to get is Necro 3 on Cheshire Cat. So if he doesn't have a Necro and that guy gets decrept, he's just gone unless there's a stun nearby. Or like there's not going to be any damage in follow up if the hero is stunned, which is a huge problem. And I think that's part of the reason why I wanted to pick Hero Light Queen to have some big magical burst uh, to throw in in case that hero does get decrept. So. Should be a good game. I'm looking forward Prepare to it. For battle. Yeah. Game number one. Uh, the tail end of our group stage here at Draskal. The main event starts tomorrow. The studio's back. No more remote production. Uh, and then I think we have like five or six days of that. And then I think we come back to Divine. The schedule's pretty interesting. It, it sort of weaves back and forth. So It's almost like a full league, right? Like yeah. It's just... I, I like that, though, because having a set schedule, I feel, is easier for teams over the course of a longer period of time than it is to just say, okay, we're going to play like 8 trillion games in three days, right? Yeah. I, I think that, that works better for everyone, to be honest. Better for the audience, too, no doubt. But uh, the one thing that made me sad is that the prize pool for the European Divine Division is more than the entire NA Division, which only has one seconds. tier because there's not enough teams for two tiers. I think theirs is 40K and the oh, Divine here is 50K. Oh. And then the Immortal for EU is like 500,000 or some like serious ass money for the real main event. So yeah, that's crazy. hype as this event is, the reality of North American Dota really set in when I looked at that prize pool distribution. I had a moment of, damn. Yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm glad to see that people are putting money into like the tier 2, tier 3 scene. It, it's necessary for the longevity of the game. If you want people to have... Like, obviously there will always be people who want to play Dota because they love the game. But if you want to give people a real incentive to be amazing players and like stay together as teams, there has to be some so, something you can get out of it, right? You can't yeah. just be something that you spend 12 hours a day playing and do nothing else and not make any money. It just doesn't work that way. Ability. You know, with the 16-team uh, division thing that Valve had announced uh, pre-lockdown, um, would you have played at all, dude? Like, 8 to 16, the Tier 2 division in North America? I feel like you might be a contender for a team in that bracket. Uh, if I played the game more seriously. Right now, I'm kind of just a feeder. I don't, I don't really like... All right. You know how it is when you're playing to improve versus playing to just play? Yes, it is a very different mindset, that's true. Yeah.
I mean, give me give me time, you know. <laughs> I need yeah. a lot of time. I don't know, dude. I heard Veggies Esports might be recruiting. Keep an eye out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got TB Venge out in the safe lane. Going to have a 2-1-2 two, two for both teams. No surprise, it'll be Pugna versus Quap mid. How does this matchup go? So I feel like it should be pretty good for Pugna, mainly because his attack range is significantly longer. Uh, he's going to have a damage advantage too, especially as level start get going. Uh, but, you know, both heroes are going to get something. It's not like Pikachu is going to get owned here. Might be a slightly advantage for the Pugna. Right. And of course, up top, we do have this position for Rubik, paired with the Cheshire Cat Beastmaster here in the off lane against the Witch Doctor Void. Void taunting his way in between last hits. Very nice. Dream, a man with style, elegance, and grace. Yeah, this guy is uh, no joke. I've watched a lot of this guy's pubs. He is extraordinarily good at the game. Yeah. Um, but I think the matchup should be fine still uh, for Cyber Legacy, just because the Witch Doctor is the, the anti-boar hero. That's why I was talking about during the draft, it's important to have someone who can sit in the lane and like prevent the Beastmaster from just being super annoying. Witch Doctor can do that early, then later on they can just move the darks here if they want to have someone. Creep stun. Pretty yeah. good. Although well, Slayer is uh, getting whomped by Gilger right now. Oh, he knocks the Sal. Slayer, he gets a little greedy with it, and my gosh, he gets punished. Yeah, that's an oof. You you really don't ever want that to happen. This is not a point as a support where you're just going, do I just die? He's actually going to skill Udi Restoration level 2 instead of Maledict. I was just thinking, this this is an option. I don't know if it's the play, but it's, it's one that you've got. If you really don't think you're ever going to get a kill, it's fine. Um... Um, this is kind of a weird lane. Void's not really that good at killing in the early levels. Maybe if you get lucky with bashes, but... Don't underestimate how good Maledict is if you have two points into it at level three. Oh, if, trust me, buddy. I know. <laughs> if you catch someone and you get a lucky cask and it hits them like twice and you have a, a time lock or two, that, that can definitely just be a kill. Yes, but I think this build is also like extra anti-boar because you got the sure. cast to kill him and now the voodoo restoration. I've definitely turned lanes by going level one or two voodoo restoration and it's just too much sustain. Yeah. Especially with the Void's time walk healing. Yeah, I think they're both very valid ways of playing. It's just a in the moment decision making. If if he didn't yeah. just get his salve knocked off, maybe he would have skilled Maledict, you know? That's, like, that's it's, it's kind of hard yeah. to say. <laughs> Bottom lane. Oh. Dark Seer in some trouble. Looks like they just popped a fresh meta, and now TB is going to get to dominate the lane for a minute. How fun! Uh, Forty-four seconds. Pikachu is actually pulling ahead in this mid lane. Oh, I see why. Okay, so you can see itemization difference here between the mids. Double null versus bottle rush. That's probably why he has a slight CS advantage on magical here. So and what's then, the the general like advantage? To, uh, we'll hold that thought. Is Gilger chased down? Looks like he'll be okay. Like, is Pikachu just going for more damage and sustain in the lane in terms of last hit, and Magical's looking for, like, more sustainability from a regen perspective? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the decision. The thing about Pugna is that his damage will be good either way. Uh, nice little oh. room grab. He can combo, but there's no way it's killing him, right? He's gonna go for the courier. Radiance courier yeah, has but been the mid-matchups... Bigna might not have had to pick up that rune. But... Yeah, the mid-matchups are always interesting because... Oh, magical? Are you just dead here, bud? I think so. Yeah. One more. Pikachu's got it. Didn't even need that. Man, last that's yeah. a that's a really silly mistake to make, honestly, in this level of play. You always have to check your opponent's mana when you're playing against Queen, especially because she has the ability to cover the entire lane immediately, especially when you're mid. And if she has mana for that plus dagger, then you are just dead, right? Like he has no fairy fires. He had nothing in his inventory. I if it's any solo kill in the mid lane is a bad thing, right? Because now he just yeah. gets bottle. That was also first blood, so it's a huge influx of gold as well. That's a really, really big death. Uh, wow. Yeah, look at that net worth difference now. 2,200 on Klopp, 1,500 on Pugna. That's a crazy margin for a lane that was, like, relatively even. Not He's dead again. Ago. And there it is. Dies twice. Pikachu just jumps up. I mean, that's, why... that's part of the snowball, right? She hits level 6, yeah. Pugna's still level 4. That's why you can't die to her like that. It's it's actually just dead lane now for him. 
that's gonna hurt Cyber Legacy a ton in this game for the, the mid to be going this poorly. Like, that one death just sets the tone for the entire game now. He's gonna be playing really far behind, he's super susceptible to being bursted, and it can just get really, really out of control very quickly. Bottom line too is being heavy pressure here, got the cart wave, trying to get some value damage on a tower. Uh, so they do have something nice going for them. Yeah. Let's see here, combo in, they get Excel, okay. Naive is still farming very well though on the Terra Blade. He's about even with the Void. CS very comparable. That is one thing about the Dark Seer. It's this constant pressure into the tower, but there are some heroes, kind of like Terra Blade, that don't really care that much. They very easily can last hit under tower. They can buy enough regen to uh, handle the ion shell pressure. It depends like TB's on... pretty well suited for this. Yeah, the, this kind of stuff though is hard for him because it's double shell. Did I just cast or curse him? Oh. I, I think the interpretation that you have of the lane is uh, not really 100% accurate because okay. in normal uh, cases, Excel's just going to die here, by the way. Yeah. The Avenge is obviously pretty useless. In this the problem is that TB is very good at laning against his damage, but this is all magic, right? And it shoves the lane so fast. And as I talked about during the draft, there's no D push, really. Like, Khan doesn't have a, a way to clear the, the creeps out quickly, so if you're under tower with a full creep wave and a cart, you are just food, right? Nice. Now, the, yeah, the cart definitely, but for like just your regular creep wave, it's still too much. I guess it ramps up too. Yeah, because right? if, if you watch how Bignum is playing this, he'll be shelled, and then the wave will also be shelled, and he'll just run under tower. He doesn't need to draw creep aggro onto himself to deal damage. Normally, when you go under tower and you dive, a lot of people will click on the hero, draw tower aggro, which it can be very dangerous, obviously, because you don't want to get you know hit by the tower. But you can just walk next to the hero and, and harass. I see. Oh, up top, that's a level two maledict now. Gilger maybe in some trouble. Green jumps forward. Come on, give me a bash, baby. There it is. Got him. Got him indeed. One, one, two, witch doctor. I like this build actually. Yeah. I no like good this stuff lot. from Slayer. Sometimes that level four rolls over, and I'm torn about whether or not to get restoration. Can point and cast. Do I want the heal? Sometimes, if there's not a lot of units in the lane, the second point in the cask is super value, because you can chain stun for that much longer. But I think in this lane, he made the right call. Nice oh, scan here. Beautiful. Gonna see Bignum. Damn, they sense that one coming off. So, Excel is still gonna try to hold the tower bottom, and kind of as you were talking about, Naive looks like he's just geared up for jungling. He's got three points in Conjure Image, holding his sixth right now in case he needs it, and uh, he's off the map. He's just jungling. Yeah, they're gonna have to sack this tower. There's no one who can really be here. He's Excel's getting whatever experience he can before he dies, even autoing the creep a bit, try to get one extra. Little min max stuff, but he knows that like there's nowhere else for him to really be. He could try to stack or whatever, I suppose, for the TB if they want to like stack ancients and pop meta to kill them. Oh, this is bad. He still oh. sunder. Oh, there's the sunder. Maybe the turnaround. Still a long duration on life drain though. Is anyone coming in? There they are. Pikachu's here. Magical's done. Boys and girls, that's why you hold the skill point. Now, you might be thinking, well, I'm in the jungle. I'm not going to fight anybody. Sometimes the fight comes to you. Man, that was super, like, risky for, uh, for Magical to make that kind of play. Like, if you look at the way that the map is worded, they see inside of the jungle of Khan, like the Radiant jungle, and they see mid, and they see top. And there was no one under any of those wards. So to make that kind of play blind and the high ground to go for that, like if he gets it, he looks like a god, right? But it's it's super high risk. Radiance I don't know, those types of plays are, are really, really risky. Maybe that's how he feels now, he needs to yeah. play. I was gonna say, could you reason it that the mid has gone so bad that the Pugna feels like, listen, if I play safe and normal, we've lost anyway. So I mean, not maybe. all in, but that kind of Hail Mary-ish mentality. Yeah, it's just one of those things where you look at the, as an observer, we can see everything, so you have to be very, uh, you have to pay a lot of attention to where the wards are for each team. And then I looked at the wards and I'm like, he didn't see anything. He literally saw nothing and he walked in there. That's crazy to me. Like he he's way more brave than I would ever be. I mean, I, I think another element maybe is that, I wouldn't use the word rare, but not every TB will grab Sunder at level six. Roar here. I'm Bignum. Oh. Bignum in pretty deep. And now Gilger. He's going to make the rotation. And that should be an easy pickup. Though Slayer also dies elsewhere. Looks like up in the mid lane. He'll get finished off by Pikachu. Got off a curse, but not enough for a counter kill. 
This is a lot of movement from a Beastmaster, by the way. There's not a lot of times where you see the Beast just uh, give up his own lane. A lot of the time, they'll just sit where Naive is right now and just keep pressuring that lane and keep pressuring it and make people come up there and react, but... I actually quite like the fact that Cheshire Cat didn't stay top because it opens up Naive's game a lot more. Like, he doesn't have to be there because, at the moment, the only way that Cyber Legacy can kill Naive is basically Chrono into additional spells. So even if they were to make some kind of move on him, it would require a lot of resources from Cyber Legacy to actually secure the kill in the first place. So I think that this type of movement, if they get like the mid-tier one, although this this tower is going to be relatively difficult to push in if the, the Void is sitting on Chrono, because the TP reaction can kind of just thwart this immediately. Um, it will let the TB farm, but I'm not sure if mid tower is really easily attainable right now for Khan. They might just be sitting him here because, you know, they saw the the tiny behind the the tier one tower or something like that, and it was just a TP reaction. Maybe I'm I'm reading a bit too far into it. Void wants Midas. Okay, stream feeling like he needs a farming tool. It is nice against Beast to get rid of one of the Necro units, but oh yeah, okay. I, I don't know. I, I feel like Midas may be too slow. I'm, we'll see. I'm a little we'll worried. We haven't really seen Khan push much at all, but they absolutely can once everything falls into line. Uh, Venge has not gone for the aura build here. She's gone for the Max Magic Missile. It's like the classic Venge build. Mid lane now. Pikachu taking a lot of damage. Not enough for a kill. Void comes nice in. Chrono. Chrono on two. Very nice. Swap back. Wait, what? Still gonna, wait, what did he swap? I was just about to say the same thing. What the hell did he swap? Okay, so Pikachu and Excel are dead. I feel like I need to watch the replay when the delay catches up. That was so weird. Now Dream in pretty deep, but he's got a lot of reinforcements. Naive gets cursed. He needs to be a little careful here. He's falling quick and gets comboed Ow. down by Big Num. Disastrous fight for Khan. Yeah, that was something. Not respecting the amount of burst damage that Cyber Legacy can put out of this stage. Like, if you get Decrep stun combo from Tiny, that's a lot of damage. Not even including, like, the Nether Blast and the Life Train. If you don't have uh, any way to mitigate magical damage, you can't show like that. That TP was super ambitious from Naive. They lose the tower anyway. They lose multiple heroes. Uh, I think what happened with the swap, by the way, I don't know who he swapped, but he might have been standing on, like, the southern side of the Chrono, and level 1 swap range is not that big, so there's a chance that he might not have been close enough to swap Pikachu. I think that might have been what happened. Ah, okay. Um, that's, that's fair. Yeah, if, if that's the case, then he just swapped whoever else was in there, just to make sure that they didn't die, which is fine. But it just looked really weird at first, because you see the swap, and I didn't immediately know where Excel was in the fight, so... I wasn't a uh, hundred percent sure. Yeah, so depending how he was standing in on your positioning, I think you're exactly right. The cast range on Nether Swap is 700, and yeah. for Void's Chrono, the radius is 450. So there absolutely can be spots if you're on the opposite side of the bubble. Yeah, I think that's what happened. All right. Well, either way, uh, Cyber Legacy, man, they find themselves the lead, it's five to seven. Radiant Their core is now top. moving towards the top. Attack. The recovery has been made. Pugna is still trailing uh, against the Queen of Pain, but Magical at least has uh, his core item now. He's got the Aether Lens. See you later, bud. Find Rubik. Grand Magus will get 30 seconds to reflect in silence. Yeah, that, that mid play just really crushed all the momentum that Khan had. Like, they lose their tower, one smoke play kills the support. They're gonna counter smoke here. Excel and Pikachu are walking top. Uh, this kind of movement kind of gives away that there should be heroes here. Oh, Sakaar Cat. Is he in trouble here? He just did. I think so. He's just done. He's cursed up. Player finds the kill. That was one of those moments where Cheshire Cat's still pushing forward. I'm like, I don't. I'm not seeing what you're seeing here, bud. I don't know. His team was too far. That's the big yeah. problem. Like, he sees them smoked behind, and, and he... And there was no Sonic Wave, either. Yeah, he... Well, they, they would have gotten a kill with just the Roar. I don't think they needed a wave to, to get any additional stuff. Stun coming out here. I think she's still gonna get the rune. Oh! No blink for two. Swap from Excel. All right. Idea. Yeah, this this game is very strange. A lot of mistakes coming out here from Khan. Like that play from Cheshire Cat moving too far forward. Uh, kind of dying before his team is close enough to help him. Losing the mid tower. Naive TPing into pretty much certain death. When he could have just been pushing a tier two top with like a support behind them. 
I feel like these types of moves are hurting them a lot more than anything. Uh, starting to seem like this Midas might have been a good choice on Dream. Uh, he now has a Maelstrom queued up, so still a pretty yeah, farm-heavy build. Yeah, he realizes, well, it's it's a two birds with one stone kind of thing. When you're playing against TB, you know that the hero's going to have a tremendous amount of armor. There's no reason to scale physical damage against him, because you're just never going to do enough. So having things like Mjolnir, MKB, these items are what help you kill TB. The alternative route is your team kills him, and you just build items to stay alive and stay in the fight. So sometimes you'll see, like, one attack speed item and, like, Scotty or whatever just to stay on that one guy so you can get as many time locks as possible. So then your team can deal with everyone else and then come back to him. But it looks like the route that he's choosing to take is, I'm just going to kill you in this sphere. Yeah. Boy definitely loves attack speed. That's for sure. I like that Mjolnir buildup. Well, Khan... Posturing like they want to get a little aggressive here, invading the enemy jungle, moving up towards the top lane. The Pugna going to move into the tree line, and on the other side, Big Num. Well, he secures the TP. Now, the Orchid comes out on Queen of Pain, just as the Blink Dagger comes out on Tiny. So both teams now with a shiny new option in these team fights. And both teams are very capable of just popping a hero. You know, Orchid into Radiant anything is just death. Standing. And then Tiny Combo into anything is also just death. And Cheshire Cat behind enemy lines here. Oh, magical. They found it. Thought he was safe in those trees, but now CL come in and maybe they'll try to set something up. Dream does have a chrono. Already used the time walk as Gilger deep behind the tower. Will oh. be finished off. Now the chrono on two. This is beautiful. Death ward from the Witch Doctor. He put it in the chrono. Yep, there it is. Uh, not going to do much there as Sonic Wave comes out and Excel. He should go down. A two for two. Another very awkward fight. Um, yeah, just like how Rasta wards don't work in Chrono, nor does the Death Ward. God, it was like right on the edge. I can actually see that being a misclick because of the way that he was standing, like relative to where the Chrono was placed. He was like above it, right? And it's sometimes it's hard to see like the exact edge because it is an actual sphere. You can't like tell exactly where the edge of the Chrono is. I mean, you there can just say, yeah, just drop it further, but. No, but there are moments where like Dota is not top down. Right, we look right, at right. it from an angle, so when you're coming at things from that Dyer's northern angle, it can be hard to tell the the depth, I guess Magical. is the right word there. This is a really weird chase. I don't know why they're in so deep, but I think Magical's done for. <laughs> What's going on though? here? What, the? what was that? They don't even have vision. Again. Okay, I guess yeah, they, that's, they placed the they header do. word there, yeah, but... Dyer's top top. Um, I didn't see it at first. They do have anobs. Okay, and they're also going to get Dark Seer on the feed train. By the way, Dreskel, is this ward still totally broken? This uh, dire one here, where the sentry up top doesn't dire get clear vision fortified. of this tier below it for whatever reason? You, you mean like when the sentry about? is initially placed? Dyer's no, like tower. there's something weird about this spot in the jungle where this dire observer is. There's two little mini pillars Dyer's next to the middle one. Tower. Right. There's something fucky with that vision where if you put observers there and then you put a sentry observer on the other team on top, you don't get true vision on that middle tier below because it's like absconded somehow. I'm not sure. That was the case. They personally. might have patched it because I remember Jenkins made a video about it with that ward spot being like really, really dumb where you can put an observer under a sentry and you have to put like an observer on that tier to see. Huh. Yeah, I, I didn't. Uh, it might I have been aware. patched. I, I don't play. Sure. I don't play five that much anymore. So I don't if, play if five at that thing. level. So I can't speak to it. Yeah, I mean, it, it might be. It might still be that way. It might be fixed. I'm not sure. If they placed it there, there's obviously got to be a reason. So could be what you're saying, and the fact they just can't see it. It would make sense because they they put a sentry literally on top of the pillar, and it's still there. Yeah. So, so. maybe that spot is still busted. You need to. That's a pro tip, Draskal. That's plus 30 on me, buddy. Against my will, the playing the five. I'll, uh, I'll remember that. I always forget that at the higher level of pubs, you don't need to farm roll cues. Well, you do. Is if, if the average MMR of the game is not 7k, you still have rolls. Excel is just mega dagger, by the way. He's, he's creep status now. He's done. Okay. It is still Khan with a small net worth lead. Uh, up to 2k now. It was looking great for CL until the that weird chase into the Radiant Jungle, and now they're they're playing catch up again. Yeah, I think they just want to keep.
con on their toes a bit. I mean, obviously the moves themselves aren't like perfect. They keep losing heroes here and there. But I think that if the, the Void gets to a stage in the game, because he finishes that Mjolnir, right? He gets one item on top of this. He becomes like the scariest hero on the map, more or less. Definitely true. Dyer's bottom tower is under TB attack. still needs his BKB and may, honestly, maybe even another item at this point. The burst damage on Khan is there, though. They just need to be able to, you know, have Pikachu get the Orchid on someone. Let's see if there are there any saves yet. So it's Lens on Magical. They have Greaves. The Darks here can dispel the Orchid, but that's about it. So Orchid still kills four out of the five members of Cyber Legacy if they can get the combo going correctly. A roar here onto the Witch Doctor. See you later. Oh, okay. Quick pick. Yeah, he uh, got the bounty rune though. So, moral victory. Dark Seer, what's he looking at here? A crimson. Mid lane, they're gonna find a Rubik. He's got a time walk. All right, Gilgir. I almost feel bad. Also a glimmer cape. Such a nice spell to have on Rubik. Because you're often like against heroes like Tiny, you're just so often a target, right? Like he sees you and he, he just. You know, his eyes turn red, it's like, oh, freebie. And then, you know, you have time walk and his whole combo is wasted. Cheshire Cat in a little deep up top. That's a toss back into the tower. And hey, look, his buddies are here. That was weird because he was walking up like he knew they were coming. And his blink was off cooldown the whole time. And he, like, his hawk had to have seen the hill, right? Oh, no, it doesn't see the left side of the hill. Okay, hawk misplacement. We'll see. Like so if you have those... your hawk oh, just sorry. on the camp, you can see both sides of the ramp and the power anyway. More on the yeah. boy. This is a big kill. Can they find it? Bada boom, bada bing. Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, that's why he needs his uh, one more item. He needs that BKB so that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore. Once he has it, that combo will no longer be possible unless he is stunned from 100% to zero. That's why timings are so important in Dota. I think people don't really... Like, they can... Intellectually, they can understand it, but they can't understand it in the game by feel, if that makes sense. Like, they, they don't instinctively sure. know when a hero is strong. They can just see it after the fact, or they can look at it from a, an observer perspective and be like, oh yeah, obviously this guy's strong. Right. But it's much, much different when you're in the game. So it, it's a bit like the stock market, like buy, or buy low, sell high. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. BKB from Pikachu, gonna press in. Sonic Wave only connects on one. Reed's there to mitigate some of it. Pretty good ultimate from Slayer, but they still lose the Darks here. Now the Primal Roar, maybe one more casualty. That's a two for nil in favor of Khan. Numb with an avalanche, and they'll continue to retreat. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's like everybody knows, well, yeah, I should fight around my timings when I'm at my power spike, but knowing when you are is very, very hard to identify in the actual moment. Your power spike is when you want to sit in your own woods, Zyori, for the entire game and never leave for any reason, even if your throne's being attacked. It is funny that like, occasionally you'll come across those pub teammates that are just stupidly defensive. You know, they get a kill and it's just always back to farming. Oh, yeah. It's like... It's, uh, Okay, here we go. Tiny jumps in, he eats the Orchid too. This nice. is actually great. Chrono on three. Dream trying to finish off Queen of Pain, but they need more damage. They get it, and now Roche very low. Can they snipe the last hit? Roshan standing on 40 HP. It's gonna got, die to the Dire. Aegis picked up by Dream, and now they kill Naive. It is a complete disaster for Khan. I don't think that could have gone worse. They're gonna get cleaned up. They can see the Aegis, and they can see Roche. I don't, like, Roshan got dragged out of the pit, so he actually couldn't be attacked for, like, a couple of seconds there. Like, that was, uh, that was really strange. He was at 1 HP for so long, and then right as Roshan died, the Naive got tossed, so he wasn't able to actually pick up the Aegis. So nice little combo play there from, uh, from Dream and Big Num. Good stuff. Nice little turnaround. That was, like, what, a 4k swing? And Roche? Something like that. Yeah, let's uh, take a look at the graph. Looks like, yeah, almost exactly 4k. That was a really nice chrono, though. Dream has Radiant's been on point this game. He's found this great balance of putting a lot of priority on farming, but still showing up to fight and using chrono pretty much every time it's available. And 
I think every Chrono has looked pretty darn good. Now needs to be careful as the Orchid chases him down. Time walk. Up in two, but, uh, okay. Well, Dream. He cursed him. Sorry to compliment you there, buddy. Damn it, Zyori. The end of the ages. Get it together. And, uh, is he dead again? Big Num comes in, swap around, and Sonic Wave is more than enough. Yeah, that's a pretty big misplay, honestly. Too bad. Well, that was the nine second gonna... BKB from Quop. Silver Lining. Ah, uh, that. You know, these types of mistakes still kind of happen in Tier 2 games, and you just kind of, you know, you accept it because, like, those types of deaths, if we were watching two Tier 1 teams, that would literally never happen. Like, a guy being by himself against a team with multiple blinks, an insane catch with no BKB, holding an Aegis on his own with no team, that would just never happen. So you're right? telling me Matumba Man wouldn't have died there? 100%. I'm telling you Matumba Man would not have even been there. All right, that's the Drascal guarantee. <laughs> like, I see. It's just one of those plays where you look at it and you're like, yeah, okay, you have Time Walk, but there's Blink Beastmaster, you can't juke into the trees, there's Hawk, there's a Queen, there's Howl for Vision. Like, there's no way that you're going to be able to use Time Walk defensively well enough to be able to live in that situation. I, I call those the high-risk, zero-reward. Oh, absolutely. It's like, best-case scenario, you live. What's the, like... Cool. You could also live just fine in your jungle, man. <laughs> like here's a, here's a a really good thing to to go by. Like rule of thumb when you're watching a game. If you go, wow, I probably would have done that. It's bad. Like I probably would have made that play. So it's bad because I'm bad. That's how you have to say it, right? Yeah, that's a, a fair way to frame it. Now, there is a double damage up on this dark seer right now. And how long until Chrono? It's up. And just a recipe away from the boys' BKB. So still pretty tight in terms of net worth right now. Uh, let's see how Terrorblade's doing. He's got the BKB, the Manta, and it looks like Aya Scotty will be the choice next. Yeah, Scotty, staple item on TB. I thought he might go for Satanic, but he might feel he needs a bit more damage to Roar here. Free Witch Doctor. On the Witch. And he might actually win. They have detection. Sonic Wave in the back line. Slayer does fall, as does the Dark Seer, but now the buyback. The Chrono does secure the kill onto Excel, but doesn't get anything else. Hit me was quite odd. Dyer's middle tower. That was the 10 second charge for Naive. He might have hit it during Chrono and forgot to hit S, because he like BKB'd as soon as the Chrono ended. That happens a lot, by the way. So if, if you don't know how it works, oh. if, if you BKB and you get stunned immediately, it will queue up your BKB for after the stun ends. So if you don't hit S, you will BKB after the stun ends, no matter what, right? Like it will just go off. So you have to yes. hit S. So it's, yeah, there is a little cast point on BKB. It's not actually instant. Yeah, it's, it's more about order queue, but it's one of those things that people don't know. And they'll be like, what the heck? Why did I just BKB, right? Like you hit it before the chrono, and then you don't actually need to use it after the chrono ends because no one hit you, but you forgot to hit S, so your BKB goes off regardless. And it's like, ah, it's one of those things that feels bad. That's one of those funky little Dota mechanics. Yeah. yeah. Didn't know. Wish our cat. Ooh, walks right into it. That boar, he's going to cost you. That cask just bouncing back and forth, playing ping pong. Ouch. Yeah, yeah that's a, the Witch Doctor superiority right there. That is real hard to deal with as a Beastmaster. And Excel. Man, look at that. He scouted the high ground. It's like he knew that the danger was there. I probably shouldn't walk up here. And just as he scouts it, oh, damn. I've already stepped too far forward. Now, that's a play I would make, Drasco. I have made that very play. Nerds. Yep. Where, where yep. you know it's like, I don't know if I should do this. And it's like, I should have trusted my gut. Why didn't I listen to my own inner voice? Yeah, I, I do that shit constantly, too. Don't worry. I'm like, I should not go for this one more wave. I'm going it, for it. It feels like gambling against yourself, where you're like, now I know I shouldn't, but what are the chances they're actually making the right play and still standing there? Yeah. I'll roll the dice. I like to gamble. And you're wrong, like, a lot of the time. <laughs> Yep. No, I mean, everyone does that. It's, you know, it's a universal Dota thing. Yeah, one if thing we all actually listened to, like, the logical side of us when we played the game, we'd all probably have much higher win rates. 
One thing that uh, Jenkins mentioned in a video I really like is that those moments when you're winning a game but the other team has good high ground defense and you just have to starve the map and resist the urge to run high ground. He's like, it feels bad for you when you're winning because you want to get impatient, but you got to remember the mental warfare that they're experiencing. And after a few minutes of that, there's just this uh, the, the psychological phenomena of wanting that that sound reward of farming gold and hearing that sound is like it fucks with you. The longer you stay high ground not farming, the more you want to leave the base and do something. Speaking of gaming, here we go. Cheshire Cat, Mental Warfare continues. Swap from the Venge will save him, but now it's Cell, I think, likely to fall. EKD from Pikachu jumps in. Nice Sonic Wave, but the Chrono kind of awkwardly placed. Another amazing swap. Excel will go down. Big Num somehow able to live as he steps to the side. Naive with another questionable BKB. They are going to get the Witch Doctor, maybe chasing down the Dark Seer. TP home. This is bold. Not going to make it. Yeah, it's just, this is kind of what I was expecting to happen eventually, you know, it's around 30 minutes. Every time a Chrono goes out, the core just gets swapped away. Like, Dream, he really wants to, to get a core kill in these Chronos, but he just can't. This is why at the draft, I was like, okay, it's pretty even-ish. But if Cyber Legacy lose momentum, it's really hard for them to continue because their uh, core hero, obviously, was open pick, so like, first phase. You are just going to play into a lot of counters. And that's just how it is. Oh, Queen of Pain dies solo, solo to the void. I mean, he's losing his base. He doesn't like. Just say his teammates uh, don't have buyback, so there are very few options here. That's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, more than the void can hope for if he TP back, but easy, easy mid lane. Um, remember, that was a. Radiance Courier. Oh, that was a dieback for the Witch Doctor. So I thought it was the Dark Seer. I guess he bought back a while ago. Yeah, this is a. Witch Doctor's on cooldown. This game is going to come down to if Cyber Legacy can find an opening where the Venge needs to be taken care of before Chrono comes out. Like, either that or the Venge needs to be in the Chrono with another core. Those are like the two situations that can occur where Dream can kill the target that he wants to kill before the um, before the Chrono ends. Because as long as Excel is alive, he's been on point, like you mentioned, with swapping heroes away. And the TB isn't, like, even if his meta's down, he's still scary if you just let him hit you, right? But if yeah. there's no Chrono on the Void, he's not scary at all. Like, it, it, no BKB, no Chrono, what's he gonna do? Yeah, right now, uh, Terrorblade has something like 40 armor. That's <laughs> yeah, no kidding about that magic damage against the Void. Yeah, you want, um... You want like MKB Milner against TB. Same thing when you're playing like Life Stealers and, and Juggernauts and stuff like that. You need to itemize for items that are not going to scale your physical damage, but more uh, on-head effects. Now, do you like this Lincoln's on Void though, Drastal? Because in some ways I feel like it's warranted, but in other ways I am really, really worried about their damage output now. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it at all, actually. I mean, I get it. He doesn't want to get roared in his chrono. Like, I, I can make the logical connection to why he wants the item, but it's not the item that's going to win him the game. It's just going to it's going to be the item that lets him feel more comfortable. That's basically what he's opted for here. It's it's comfort over victory. And I mean, again, I've done the same thing. I bought an item where I'm like, we kind of need damage, but if I get roared, it's really bad. And you know, you're, you're making that choice in your head to say, I'm going to make it easier for me to play the fight by having a Lincoln's, but we might not have enough gas in a tank to actually kill what we need to kill. This is going to be risky. It feels like uh, playing to lose sometimes. Or you see Gary, like more, it happens to Morphling sometimes. You see a Morphling with like Manta, Lincoln's, BKB, and it's like, all right, eventually you're going to have to do damage, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Witch Doctor in the front line. Slayer going down quick. He does survive the initial onslaught. BKBs get popped. Naive and Dream, blow for blow. Dream not winning that battle outright. And there's the Chrono. Does connect on one and actually misses Cheshire Cat. That is not the Chrono they wanted. Now Cell and Pikachu jump forward. They get Slayer. They get Pet Sh Pet, Pet The Dark Seer. <laughs> Two for nil. I like how you uh, just abandoned it. That was good. Isn't it just Petishara? Petishara. Pettis that's for it. Sure? Yeah, Petishara. Buyback on Petushara. The Dark Seer. Gilgar? Yeah, but I mean, you can see how bad it feels to be Dream in this game, right? Like, yeah. Excel was standing so far away from the engagement there, and you can't solo chrono him, right? You just can't. Uh oh, Tiny in the front line, Sonic Wave, a little extra disabled. They do drop the hex onto Venge. Oh, a nice double try. flip! Pet Pedu Kishara, very nice, but now the, the uh, if Sunder comes out. Dream trying to time walk back, no BKB, limited options, naive. 
He surged forward. Those Rubik steals. Wow, that's great. He stole Surge. That is a huge utility for this con lineup. Yeah, Surge is just incredible. He goes over uh, movement speed cap, too, which is really, really crazy. You just move so quickly. There's smoke up here. No Darkseer, no Chrono. I mean, this is kind of like a Hail Mary. They're even late to the Roche is already low. Yeah, and Magical still goes in. Looks like he is going to get that pick on the Cheshire Cat. It works out pretty well. Pretty high risk there. But Aegis now in the hands of the TB, and he's also got a Basher. Not an item you see on TB that much, but pretty cool in this game for some additional lockdown. Yeah, this is great. I think a lot of people undervalue that item on range here. Because, you know, even though you're range, it doesn't necessarily mean you're scared of being in melee. Like, what's not you scared of this game at this point? Not really a whole lot. Maybe if he gets chronoed, his entire team, like, disconnects, he might die. But besides that, He's feeling pretty good. I'd so, say so. Yeah. You got the Scotty, the BKB. You, you can survive a Chrono for sure. You're not afraid of the magical damage anymore. You know, even with the Decrep, they can't burst you that fast. Witch Doctor's ult tickles at this point. Physical damage. Yeah, the so there's this weird Faceless Void dynamic where if you have another core on your team that is strong enough to force out spells, scale well into the late game because you know that there's always going to be like a decent chrono opportunity, right? So in this game, no one else on his team is strong enough to force anyone on Khan to do anything, right? Like if, the, if Excel is not forced to use his swap before chrono comes out or, you know, if BKBs aren't forced out correctly, then it becomes significantly harder for Dream to do his job, which is chrono some cores and kill them. So in a, in a normal game, if you have more backline reach, you can just kill the Venge, and then the chrono comes out and it feels good. Or if the Pugna was like scarier, and he was just like frontlining for the team or whatever, and forcing out like a swap because he has a hex now, then that opens up chrono opportunities. But the last couple of fights, you know, before that item comes out specifically on Magical, there's just not really a whole lot that's making Khan scared besides Bubble. There needs to be more than one threat, I guess, is yeah. a, if saying what I said in a very long roundabout way. No, definitely. Like, now it's defaulted back to this pressure on Dream of like, all right, buddy, we're going to need you to catch the perfect Chrono for us to have a chance in this team fight. And just Chrono all five of them. Obviously, Khan know that, and when that's the only big threat they have to deal with, they just Delta split at the beginning of every fight. So Void has no no good option. I feel like you see this with Magnuses sometimes, where it's like, all right, Magnus, we need you to start the fight with RP and also catch three heroes or else we're not going to win. It's like, well, yeah. then I guess we lost, guys, because Magnus really wants to follow up or, like, counter-initiate with the RP. Scare them so they clump up. Yeah, Void is the same in a lot of cases. The benefit of Mag is that even if you can't get good RPs and power is still just broken. So you have Dyer's that. Bottom tower. Yeah, fair enough. Dyer's bottom Although Void is now very close to the MKB. So speaking of power spikes... Yeah, he's going to all in it. He won't have buyback for this, but I think it just it has to happen this way. He needs to be scary right now. He can't wait. Bottom tier two. The last outer tower. Kong can be able to finish that one off. Maintain some map control here. Uh, Butterfly. Man, this TB's farming so fast. I feel like he just got the Abyssal and he's already halfway to Butterfly. They'll just keep this siege going. Primal Roar, Cheshire Cat jumps in, Pugna, Magical, needs to live, and he will, but just barely. Now Void flies through, Chrono on three, catches the Venge, this is pretty darn good. Gets Pikachu, follow up onto Excel, and now the real team fight breaks out. Buyback though, Pikachu back in it, Cheshire Cat won't be able to survive, they need some way to deal with Naive. He does still have Aegis though, he's gonna go down, BKB at the ready. This is pretty good for CL. Now the Hex, naive, no chance to survive. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, nice little engage there. Uh, I, Pikachu fought out right away, but it felt a bit ambitious, right? Like, how's he going to get back to that fight? There's just no access point. You yeah, got and there's nothing else really on the map uh, like that he's going to get anyway. There's no adequate towers or anything like that. MKB coming in big, lots of damage. The Hex also coming in big there as well from Magical. And for a moment, as as the... I kind of thought Khan might be able to take that fight, but then the Terra Blade just dropped. Well, I they... think he should have used the BKB before Aegis in that situation. I know normally you don't want to do that, but he ended up not using the BKB at all that fight. I don't know if it would have mattered, honestly. 
Like, the, the Queen and the Venge were just dead first, right? Like, they were the first two to go, and when that happens, the fight's already kind of, like, lost at that point. It's the one place on the map where Cyber Legacy can have sort of a, a positional advantage, because Beastmaster Vision's not really going to help you that much in those type situations, and not only that, but the way they engage... Like, Cheshire catches YOLO blinks past the Tier 3. Like, that... Yep. You're forcing your team into a choke point. That's where that's where Void wants to fight you. He wants to fight you in a choke point because his Chrono is going to be much easier to land. It definitely seemed like the Venge panicked a little bit and ended up too far in. I mean, she was like at the tier three when she got caught in the Chrono. Yeah, but that's that's kind of what I mean, right? Like you're forcing your team to make that choice. Like, do we just let him die? Uh, Pikachu. I don't know if he's going to find a solo kill on the magical. Okay, with the dust from Gilgar, they certainly will. Holding the outpost. 40 minutes about to roll over. We'll go even at least. Uh, Dyer are holding bottom outpost. Yeah, I, w I think it was just not the kind of way you want to start a fight for Khan if you're pushing up a hill like that. Like, you're strong, but you're not that strong. You can't just blink over the hill, roar a guy behind a tier 3, and hope that your team is going to follow you and not just, you know, lose heroes in the process. It, it, you can't do that against Void. Punishment is real, and Terrorblade actually changes his mind, does not go for the Butterfly. Instead, wants the Daedalus after Abyssal. Big damage. Okay. I like and that. And Void's gonna buy a, a, a cool, I guess, Satanic queued up next. Some more survivability. Yeah, it's good in case he does get disabled. The status resist is great. He, he hits uh, very fast and very hard now to just recover all of that HP very, very quickly. It's only going to take him like two or three hits max to full heal. Like, Satanic yeah. active is just nuts. Probably too good, to be honest. Um, He's also got Illusion Escape, which is also fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I'm wondering what other items... They have Minotaur Horn and that's it. So they're actually missing two tier four items currently. It'd be really nice to get their hands on that. Maybe he can get himself a leveler, perhaps? I know that uh, Khan just got one. So their TB's got a leveler now, which is Connor great. Connor also missing an item still, the uh, Timeless Relic on Co-op. And they have a Prince's Knife currently not being used. And they're the two big items, Satanic and Daedalus, both picked up now as uh, we see a smoke from Khan. I'm a little surprised nobody's using the Prince's Knife. I usually think of that as a pretty darn good Tier 4 item. I think the only person who would be able to use it is Queen. And he's to the, uh, to the Relic instead, like you said. So, so. It's still better on Venge than the Pupil's Gift, though? Yeah, but the Venge yeah, is never going to... She's never going to be in a position to hit anyone. That's the main thing. Like, if she's playing the fight correctly, she will be behind everyone forever. Like, until Chrono comes out, and then she's going to swap, and then she's going to die in the Chrono, probably. Yeah. So it still only takes one auto attack, though. If you could swap and then hex the person that's killing your buddy, it's like the double save. They can't chase you down. But how many times are you swapping if it's not into a Chrono? Well, not that many, but... I'm not saying it's yeah. impossible. I'm just saying it's low likelihood that it would be useful. Yeah, I, I think you make a good point. Because imagine a, a situation if they slow siege, like Khan, and they just have the TB with the Aegis like before, and he's just meted hitting the tower, and the Venge is just sitting behind him. How are they going to go on that? That's what should happen, right? Like, it shouldn't be your Beastmaster yeeting into the base. It should just be the TB with an Aegis hitting the tower and saying, you have to go on us, because it's much harder for Cyber Legacy to go on you when you have that, like, concave around the Tier 3 as opposed to just all clumping yeah. on the ramp. And I guess, like, the scenario I'm painting out, she already has Magic Missile to do that. Like, if you swap not in Chrono, you can still just stun somebody. It doesn't yeah. need to be a right-click hex, so it's kind of redundant. All right, you win this one, Draskal. You won the battle, but I'm coming for the war. That's fine. I'm always down to talk about the <laughs> hypotheticals and stuff are really fun in this game because you have to, you know, sometimes it forces you to think in ways you wouldn't normally think, which mm -hmm. I think is is a good thing. Gilger's got uh, Agonyms queued up on Rubik. That's always a good one, especially when you've got Blink Aether Lens already. Like you can spell steal from downtown and then some. Yeah, there's a lot of really good spells to get this game too. Cask, Maledict, Surge, you know, any tiny spell is always nice if you use it correctly. You can obviously get Chrono if you're Dude, super fast. The Ag's Time Walk, that's an upgrade, all right. Do you but, really want to Time Walk into them? <laughs> I would be so scared to do that. No, I'm just thinking of the style points if he pulls it off, really. Uh, yeah. well, risk, I guess the, right. the Time Walk Bash lasts longer, right? Because of his passive? I've never actually done oh, it, so I don't know. The Arcane Supremacy, yeah, it should. That would be crazy. I've never seen the interaction in a game, but it would be funny. 
Same. <laughs> so Roche is up. Obviously tricky for both teams here. It's going to be all about positioning, who gets the better fight. Uh, Cyber Legacy kind of want to, they want to draw Khan in and then be able to fight. They don't want to just uh, like walk in and have Excel like any, like where he's standing right now is like the place he does not want to be. He doesn't want to be between the entirety of Cyber Legacy and his team. He wants to be behind his own team. And he's going to die okay. here with a real bad. He has buyout. He's going to have to use it here. Immediately. But he breaks He did smoke. break the smoke, which is good. Yeah. He did break the smoke, which is nice. Those plays are always hard to read, or it's like, yeah, that was your saving hero, but you might have just caught or prevented your team from getting caught. So not good, but there's there is a silver lining for sure. You see both teams just so timid. I think it see this is the thing, right? This is the same kind of idea that I was talking about bottom where they just do the siege with the TV and have everyone standing behind them. This is so hard for Cyber Legacy to walk into. Someone has to go in and basically sacrifice themselves to get spells off. Well, Big Numb may be a good candidate for it. Roche is falling pretty quickly. 2,000 HP left. Void ready to jump in, but caught by the Rubik. No chrono yet. He's hexed up. Sonic Wave comes down. Dream in trouble. Still sustaining for now. The chrono finally flies. Naive gets swapped out. Excel, the sacrificial lamb, does it again. Cheshire Cat deep in the back line. He BKBs. That's just a Minotaur horn. But now the reflection, Pikachu on the high ground, the Terra Blade's still alive, and CL are running out of resources. They picked up the Venge and the Beastmaster kill. PM will buy back. They finally get Tiny. TB, can he sustain? Void jumps back in now. He's trying to finish off Darkseer in the back line. It's a dead naive. Somehow Dream's still alive as Pikachu falls. Buyback's coming on both sides of the coin, but this is absolutely the Dyer's fight. Gilger, what are we doing here? Now on the other side, Roche still standing. 2,000 HP, Cheshire Cat, that's a dieback. He ran in a little too aggressive there. Ambitious eyes as now Roche will fall to the Wrath of Dream. He picks up the Refresher Shard, Aegis, and Cheese. Rubik jumps into the pit, trying to snag some spoils, but this might cost him. Gem on the deck, Gilger picks it up, no way! He's not getting out, there's no way. Blink up in two, never mind, Dream. Oh, no, I was going to say, no way he gets out of here. No way, indeed. They catch him. The we gem hits the deck. Cyber Legacy. Break it wide open. Now let's take a look at the recap. No help. God damn it. Yeah, the fight was way too long. When the fights go that long, the recap doesn't do anything for you. So three by... Four buybacks on the Radiant, and Pugna was the only one that bought back on the Dire. So a couple of those deaths were diebacks. The Venge, uh, the Quap. No, not the flop, I'm sorry. The Venge and the Beastmaster were both diebacks on Khan. So that was that was an insane swing. The XP went from 10k to now 20k in favor of Cyber Legacy. Yeah, the Satanic coming in huge there. If he didn't have that item, Dream was dead or it's like absolutely dead. He got hexed, he was at like what, 15, 20% HP, gets the time walk off, heals a little bit, pops Satanic, throws at the chrono. In that specific case, it didn't even really matter that the TB got swapped because he just needed to full heal. And once that happened, there were already heroes dead on Khan and they were being forced into buyback and their tier 2 top is alive, but it still takes time for them to get back into the fights. And obviously, Excel was the first real death there. It was a dieback on him because he obviously broke the smoke beforehand. You think uh, Khan should have just stayed more committed to the pit with the TB stuck inside the strat that you were talking about? Yeah. 4 plus 1? Because it seemed like they, they really overcommitted to take a fight where they were on the low ground and CL had a great positioning advantage just holding that high ground spot. Yeah, I feel like they definitely did not want to chase up the hill. It seems like a theme this game where they maybe feel like they're a little bit stronger than they are relative to the stage in the game now because, like, this Void is higher net worth than the TB. Like, Dream is massive. He's basically got a full inventory Refresher Shard and a Lincoln's in his backpack. So this guy, he doesn't get any bigger than this. Like, this Moon is Shard it. Is level it. 30. I mean, he's, he's pretty yeah, slotted. Like, if you want to be like super fancy, you can get the Aghanims and stuff, but you know, he has everything he needs to, to play the game at this point. Yeah, it is. So what happened to the Ags first? It seemed like that was the build on Void for a while, and now we're seeing it a, a bit less. I'm actually, I guess, maybe surprised that Dream skipped it altogether. Uh, it kind of depends on the game. So in, in my personal experience with the hero, because I've played quite a bit of Faceless Void, it's an item where you can buy it if you have such good chrono synergy that you never really need to be the sole like killer on your team, right? 
So you, you buy it, it's very annoying, because if the enemy team doesn't have burst, they can't obviously kill you fast enough, and then you can just keep time-locking them, and you can chase forever, and it feels really good. And you obviously can farm with it too. But if you need to be doing damage in Chrono, it's not the best item for that. Like, there are other items nice. that just let you burst the, the important heroes inside of them. That makes a lot of sense. As we've talked about, a lot of pressure on the Void to get those Chronos this game. Uh, he does have a double damage, by the way. Still plenty of time on the Aegis, of course. Uh, about two minutes. Barracks. See, this is a siege, Zyori. This is how Khan should have sieged Bottom when they had their Aegis. Shashar Cat, he's going deep. He's still got the Minotaur Hirn. They've got Very protection, dead. though, bud. And he's just going to drop the Chrono. Catches the bench, too. No he got it. Rubik got it. Rubik will steal it, but can they do anything with it? Trying to throw some snowballs in. Good ult from Pikachu. Oh. They still haven't found any <laughs> kills, though. Parallel walls come out. Magical sustaining. The Quap committing so much for that. And the GG will be called. Of course, Naive also died. The fray of that fight. A tough final fight. A CL take. 39 to 30. 49 minutes. Dreams faceless void. Yeah, that was... Uh... So, there's this thing about Dota, and it's kind of always been this way. So once the game goes past like 40, 45 minutes, all bets are off, right? Like anything can happen because, you know, of buybacks and an itemization that comes out that kind of counters what your heroes...
Dire ah. Team Ban. Team like, ban. they had all this, they had Roshan, they had all this time and all this space to do whatever it is they needed to do yeah, the game, and they just ban. didn't execute. Like, that that's kind of how I feel last game really went for them. Uh, this time around, second phase ban going to be TB, Radiant not going to have it this time ban. around. But, uh, we'll see what their, their solution is at the time. Yeah, I mean, I, they have a... I definitely don't think it was, like, Beastmaster's fault, right? Like, the hero pick was not the issue for Khan. I, I will stand yeah, by the Cheshire Beastmaster. Cat. <laughs> He maybe went a little bit too YOLO. Yes. 10 seconds uh, remaining. He still did in the early game kind of what we expected from the Beastmaster. Even against remaining. the Witch Doctor who made the lane a little less painful, he still got that tier one tower pretty early. He still had a pretty good lane, still maintained some you know, early momentum. Broke open the map. I'm wondering if they're gonna target a, a port ban here for Khan, maybe make Cheshire Cat's lane a little bit easier. Uh, the Ench is still banned, so it's still like, again, the Witch Doctors, the Skims, uh, things like that that you could be playing against the Beast. Or maybe they take another uh, path this time and just pick a three position to go head-to-head -head against the Beastmaster and put the Void in whatever uh, core lane Khan decide to field here. Because no Spectre, no TB, Drow. That's it. One position, more or less. So curious to see what their, uh, their go-to is going to be here. Traditional, like, five-man carry heroes are kind of already remaining. banned. I suppose they could do something with like Jug if they wanted like sustain, but I don't know if they want to go that all in because I definitely don't like the Jug void. Certainly not late game, but uh, like a Jug, Venge, Beastmaster is a pretty Dial crazy team. trio in terms of playing yeah. fast and there are certainly some additions you could make, but uh, Priestess pick. of the Moon. She was getting picked a lot at the beginning of this patch and uh, now we're seeing her a bit more hit or miss and do a very quick Jakiro pickup for Cyber Legacy. Yeah, this is another hero that actually does quite well against Beastmaster. Double slow between the dual breath and liquid fire. During the mid game, you can obviously just macro pyre into the Ten chrono. Feels very remaining. nice. Uh, also very good at objective taking. Which I think Five is a, a little bit of an remaining. issue that Cyber Legacy had last game, and they had to fix it with a, I believe was for a last pick. So that hero kind of checks a few boxes that Cyber Legacy's lineup didn't currently have right Dial now, the chrono synergy. Uh, Morphling, okay. Blade Buyer can definitely uh, group up around this hero. He is quite tanky. They're going to need some hero now on Cyber Legacy that either offers a tremendous amount of lockdown and burst or is a natural vessel carrier as a three. Does that. Ten seconds and also remaining. play against B. It's a bit tricky. Uh, they could go with like an ABBA if remaining. they want to go more along the traditional line of let's just be able to enable our five man, but they would feel so bad to play into late game Morphling. I'm not sure, honestly, what Cyber Legacy are. I mean, I do like burst damage against Morphling. I don't know if Lena is at all in their repertoire, but heroes, I mean, they've already got their support, so Lion's well, out. I'm more along the lines of a three. Okay. Not necessarily. Okay. I mean, they, they could pick their mid if it was just some ambiguously strong laner. And I mean, they, they don't said. have last pick anyway, so that was why I was thinking about Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like you said, Lena's pretty. I mean, Queen of Pain, another one, like has pretty good burst damage against Morph. Dire team back. Maybe I'm too focused on mid. Uh, they take Void, oh, Void Spirit. Spirit. Yeah, of course. Is he no, mid or off mid. lane though? Radiant <sighs> could be either. Ban. All right. They are going to protect it with an Ember Ban, so it leads me to believe that it probably is going to be, which I would say is fine. Uh, not too many heroes that really just straight up own. Void. And it is a vessel carrier, which is, Ten I think, something. Remaining. Morph. He does offer burst damage. He buys vessel. He's backline uh, reach remaining. as well, which they did not have in the first. So now there's a hero that could theoretically threaten the Venge outside of the Chrono being cast, which is all. So now Khan, like looking at their lineup. It is not really a ton of control. Like, obviously, you have Roar and like Arrow or Avenge stun into Arrow, but there's no real, there's no oomph to their team fight, right? There's nothing that you're looking at in the 5v5 and you're going, man, we really got to watch out for this spell in particular. They don't really have that. See something that can deal with the mobility. 
on Cyber Legacy because Cyber Legacy already have Chrono, Void Spirit is catch. Um, so they've kind of got their bases covered on that. Like just having a Chrono is, is good enough of a team fight utility, I feel, this game. All that... right. I want to throw one out there. This could be a ban for Khan or a last pick for Cyber Legacy. How about Timbersaw? Dire team Timber back. offlane? Yes. Thinking it's a Void Spirit uh, mid, Faceless Void safe lane, yeah, offlaner. It's, for... it's definitely not bad. Radiant Very Slinging. mobile, some burst against Morphling, good with Void. Yeah, it also buys an item that uh, is very good against Khan's team, which is... Yeah, yeah. So I could definitely see that being a pick. They do ban the Legion, makes sense. Strong Dispel against the Master and the Marana combo. Hero that would also lane very well yeah. against basically anything that Khan remaining. have currently. Pango could also be an option in terms Five of threes. Remaining. Still in. I don't know if it's something Cyber Legacy play, but... I think every offlaner plays Pango. It's like a guilty pleasure, you know? <laughs> One of those heroes where you're like, everyone hates you for playing it, but you just gotta play it. Like it's it's too much fun to not so, play. All right, now this one's crazy, but Night Stalker for God Cyber Legacy. Teammate. How about that? Oh my God, there it is, they the ban. It. I sniped it, Draskal. Oh, that feels good, buddy. Yeah, Night Stalker is uh, coming back, actually. He really like, is. I saw him in a game yesterday. I was like, holy shit. I didn't think this hero would do well, and he like destroyed because he had a good lane yeah they're they're banning these heroes that have really solid lane and can also be very chaotic in the fight to deal with so like the aoe silence is a problem being able to dispel combos is a problem now dk i did not see coming uh no i mean it, it makes sense like i kind of get where they're coming from it's another blink buyer it's more catch it, i think it's gonna be uh dk mid then I mean, they can audible their lanes however they want, because like Void Spirit or Ten DK are fine. Remaining. Yeah. Walking to the mid lane. Um, Five seconds remaining. They can react to this pick for sure. What do Khan need now? Most likely they're mid. <clears throat> Up until their last pick, I would say it was a great puck game. I don't want to play puck really in lane against Void Spirit. But it's kind of. I want to take like a Queen of Pain. She's pretty susceptible. A lot of heroes feel susceptible to Void. Boker's pretty greedy, but they take Death Prophet. Right, nice, nice and safe. Yeah, it's super safe. I mean, both drafts are, are pretty good, in my opinion. Again, I, I can't really like favor one either I, way. I think I like Cyber Legacy a little bit more because they have so many forms of initiation. Like that factor we talked about last game with the Void, it's the opposite this time. Like you don't have... Um, like a big uh, black hole type ult, but you've got Rubik Blink Telekinesis, Jakiro with a Yule's Ice Path, Void Spirit with all of his bullshit, Dragonite with a Blinker Shadow Blade, Dragon Tail. Like Void has such an easy game relative to what we saw last time. I, I think Dream is going to get out of control. Yeah, it's, it's entirely possible. I think the one thing that's going to be tricky is that Chrono, just like it was last game, isn't super good this game like as a team fight utility because Morphling can get his morph off there's defensive swap you know there's roar inside of the chrono and if, if you chrono someone like dp even if she has you know exorcism going it, it's not really like a guaranteed fight win you know yeah so yeah. there needs to be multiple avenues of like initiation on the side of cyber legacy which in the previous game they didn't really have in this game they do have they have the void spirit they have a dk who i can only assume is going to eventually buy a blink dagger so I think that's kind of what you were leaning towards when you were talking about how they have like more ways to, to like kind of play the fights. So I don't know, man. It's going to be close. I don't know if I can favor one team in this game. I kind of have to see the lanes. I know it's a cop out, but I, I just I'm looking at it and I'm like, ah, they both have good stuff. There is a, a lot of catch also on the side of Khan, no doubt. Arrow, yeah. swap. And they have no save, by the way. Yeah. So if those spells connect, that yeah. hero is probably just dead. You're definitely right about that. Because that's where that LC ban feels uh, particularly good. I think the key piece here for Cyber Legacy is just the DK. Because this lane, like Morphling um, versus DK, you can't harass DK. You just can't. Like, breathe fire, damage reduction on your hero it just feels so bad. And you can't, like, over, uh, over morph Agi either. And then during the mid game, you're going to have the Fade Bolt damage reduction, which is 34%, and the Breathe Fire damage reduction, which is an additional 25. So you're going to kind of be like a noodle if you get hit by both of those spells. You're going to need like Emulator yeah. or something to be able I to mean, hurt. One of the games that you and I casted, we saw this offlane combo, the DK with the four Rubik, and just the Fade Bolt with the Breathe Fire stacked on top of each other in the lane. 
It, it's almost like 50% damage reduction or something. It's it, it's not actually that much, but it feels real bad when you look at the actual numbers in the lane. So yeah, not only they don't a, stack additively, right? There's no way. I don't know, actually. I have to look at the math. I don't... Ruby's only 10% at level 1. I forgot how much it ramps up. It goes to 34. Yeah. In max rank. I don't know. The additively stuff is weird. A lot of times in Dota, it seems like things by default stack additively, and then it's really broken, and then they change it to stack multiplicatively. So yeah. it should all be multiplicative, but for some reason, a lot of things start additive. I know CDR on Dazzle was like that. So when the neutral items came out, shit was dumb busted. If you got the... Uh, Oh, what's the tier four one called? I always Spell forget. Prism? Spell Prism. There was a window where you could get 100% uptime on Grave. It's wow. fantastic. <laughs> Once you hit level 18. I didn't know about that. That's lit. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah. Got patched pretty quick, but there. that was a fun week, buddy. That was a real fun week. Yeah, I can imagine. That's uh, that's tough. So, a couple of key things for the early lane. Uh, Petashara down here should be... Yeah, more or less free farm. I think Naive will most likely get uh, pressured here. Not sure really what the Avenger's going to be able to do. Yeah, then... I have mixed feelings on this hero. I don't know if we talked about it the other day, but it, it, she has moments where she can look really good, but I think harder to execute with than a lot of other fives. Well, she has a, a distinct purpose in this game, which I think is important. Well, two, if you want to be technical about it, I guess. Naive Whoa. just dies. Whoa! No dies. Level one morph is not that good. Can't can't tank that much damage. Well, first blood brought to you by EGB.com. Yep. Uh, they've got bets available on all these games, and you can go to EGB.com, click below the stream, and you get a deposit bonus. They're the partners, folks. All right, sorry, Draskal. What were you saying? I actually completely forgot. Um, not not your fault. I like naive guy. We'll blame him. Um, where were we what going? Was I saying? We had a transition point. I don't. I don't know. Mid's pretty even though. Pikachu and Magical trade and farm. This is what happens when you get bold. Just all of a sudden forget what you're talking about. I remember my 20s like it was yesterday. God, everyone, you know, says that. But to me, no way, dude. It was so long ago to me. I don't know how people can have that mindset. Well, I'm not sure how deep into the 30s you are. So I'm, I'm only I'm 30 right now. I'm turning 33. I'm turning 33 in January. Wow. I didn't realize yeah. you were so much older than me, Draskal. You really I'm are basically the dad a dinosaur. Like, let's be real. Are you? Uh, you and Pflax might be two of the oldest that we've got now. I guess uh, Nahaz, he, he he might take the. Oh cake. yeah, Ted's like forty, I think. He he like doesn't look the way he doesn't age right. I don't know. He's got those British genes where he he just. If you told me he was twenty five, I could maybe believe it. Yeah, no, I, I definitely get that. And his, uh, he looks good for his age, no doubt. Not me, though. I was the kid who was like, you know, you're like 16 years old and, and you just never get carded anywhere for everything, for anything, ever. <laughs> Blessing and a curse, I guess. All right, so laning wise, everything looking to be about even. It Morph really is. is. Morph is doing a bit better than I had expected originally, but uh, he did die once. Kind of silly death. But still, his CS is like within one of the void. Um, just the difference of denies and same with the off laners. So we basically got a first blood and outside of that, it's been been darn even. The one advantage that Cyber Legacy are gonna have going into the mid game is how how often Magical is gonna be able to move around the map versus what the TP can do. Because it's like a, a concerted effort when you have Exorcism up and you go in and you get your objective and your fight or whatever, but it's a much, much longer cooldown. The Void Spirit really only has to wait on his Astral Step charges. Do whatever he wants. Simulate. Pretty handy. Venge comes in, shows Magical who's boss, says, hey buddy, how you like that armor? Yeah, they're just fighting over the bot rune. Is that losing this fight pretty badly though? Four minute flip. He does still secure oh. it for Pikachu, though, and it is a regen. No bottle on Pikachu, it but it does set up a kill. No! Stick charges. He had a fairy card, too, right? Wasn't it both? Uh, might have been both. It looked like a big heal, and, so... Yeah, I was going to say, it looked like it healed a lot. And this regen is going to make magical ult sad. Yep. And that's why we call it the four-minute flip, because it has the ability to completely turn a lane. 
I don't really know the solution to that problem. There are definitely what, like four from like a game rooms. design perspective, like yeah, because sometimes it? the four minute rune just completely destroys the lane. Yeah. Like it's either a DD or a regen. Sometimes even a haste rune can be super impactful, and it just feels you know so bad because both supports did what they were supposed to do. They went for the rune, yeah, and then you just don't get it, and you're like, oh. Yeah, there was still a coin flip. I mean, sometimes you see that just go one person goes top, one person goes bottom, and they just commit to it being a 50 50. And it kind of sucks that a coin flip can really determine the outcome of the next two minutes. I mean, I guess the solution in the past, we used to have zero minute power runes, right? And we had two minute power runes. So do, do we just delay it? Do we make it a five minute power rune? The five minute flip? I'm okay with it. Like, like no runes except for bounty spawning until 10 minutes. Like, I I'm perfectly okay with that. Bot lane again. Is that because you're a. Oh, a purist, though? Does that take away from some of the hype for the viewers? The first 10 minutes of the game already kind of boring? Well, what I would... even more boring? Oh, top lane Slayer is just a... Darn. Yeah, murdered by Beast. But yeah, the, the whole thing with me is... I would move the, the runes back to the river, like bounty runes, but just on both sides. So that way there's still a point of contention. It's just not something that is layered in RNG and kind of like heavily swings the lane one way or another. And sometimes you just have no control over it, you know? Just And I get that there have to be RNG elements in the game, but I feel like those things have too much of an impact at an early stage. Especially since mid is already the most delicate lane in terms of it being a 1v1. And a lot of times it's like, okay, nobody's made a mistake yet. Who's going to be the first one to make a mistake? And then that's the edge that the other can really push. And yeah, especially if the matchup begins. is bad, right? Like if the matchup is bad yeah. and one guy who has the favorable matchup gets a really good rune, then you're just like, you're I want out status. You're just like, God, this is just so bad. Oh, magical here. He is level 6. He does have another Astral Step. Gilger. Ooh, he gets caught by the Taunt. He does have a little heal. No more Astral Steps. And now is Magical going to be punished for this? Void comes oh in. My Stunned God. up. He time Damn. walked into the arrow. Damn. He literally time walked into the arrow. All right. That's a... And a half. Middle tower is we call that a swing in the miss. No, it hit. He hit it right in the face. Well, well his from the Void's perspective. Face. Yeah, that's, uh, that's brutal. Okay, well, a, a good start for Khan then, I guess. Uh, recovered since feeding that first blood with the Morphling. Now Naive yeah. will take a, a little edge in his uh, relatively tough lane. Now just solo against the DK, so not quite as bad, but as you can see, Pedushara still keeping the pressure on. Soul Ring now, level 3 breathe fire, so he he knows what he's doing. He's pressured. Radiant's it's a very easy lane for DK. He gets those yeah. little pot shots on the tower, make sure that he's applying his corrosive breath, getting the maximum DPS as he can. Unhealable and max. Uh, they do have the DP down here, level 4 siphon. They can kill him if they have a third, but I don't know if they can do it with just these two. I guess they just really want Naive to get EXP. That's why they move him mid. I guess so. It feels like kind of an odd rotation, but maybe just getting him out of the lane with the DK. Because he does yeah. lane better against Void Spirit. It's definitely a lot easier for him to inhabit this part of the map, no, no doubt. We go. And no real big movements from either team happening just yet. I mean, I guess this is kind of expected just based on heroes. We saw the Exorcism pop mid. Pikachu got some chip damage on the tier one mid it's actually below half so good a good amount of damage done there probably not going to see a lot happen until at least the supports on the side of cyber legacy or so. really want that macro pyre and, and chrono combo to get a kill oh, my nice. three kills in eight and a half minutes side still playing pretty tight uh, necro book one up on cheshire cat reading about the demonic ways His EXP is a lot better this game. Like last game, he had to swap with Naive to get the TB a spot on the map that he could actually farm. And he ended up like rotating mid and playing with his team a lot more, which means he was like super under leveled for a large portion of the game, which did end up hurting him. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to have to do the same thing this time around. I doubt it. I think they were glancing at the DK bottom here, but so it's not going to commit. Action. Thinking about it. And again, Dream thinking about There's the There's just no mice. damage. Yeah. There's no damage to put into. They need something. Starting to pressure the tier one tower up top. Cheshire Cat pulls the wave through. Radiance Courier. This Beastmaster is like solos. 
listening to here. <laughs> Dyer's They're like, ah, we can't really walk oh, Chrono down bottom, they find it onto the Death Prophet, but where's the damage, as you said? Now the turn on the Void. Time Walk is going to pick him back up. Pikachu still holding the Exorcism for now. Out of Spirit Siphons, there's the Exorcism deployed. Feeling like he can get this DK, perhaps. Time Walk, but Magic Missile chases. One second on Time Walk. A little more, no arrow, and a lot of ultimates used. No kills, though, for either side. They'll be able to get some damage on the tier one, though, at least, for Khan. Uh, they know Chrono's down. Like, that's why I was saying, like, even using Chrono in this game is going to feel bad for a long time. There just needs to be... It's kind of weird that you would open Void and then just not have any damage to put into it. Like prior to the supports having six or, you know, some real big itemization coming out. Macro Pyre is pretty much your big spell to combo with. <laughs> that's it. That's, it's, it's like a starter. Yeah, that's, that's okay. I mean, Speaking of Macro Pyre, all players going to get killed. Yeah, they, they do uh, murder the Chikiro. But this is so weird, right? They, like, they lose their tier 1 mid when they basically go for a kill on one of the tankiest heroes on Radiant under his own tier 1 with no damage. It just feels very like disconnected, right? Like There's not a whole lot on Cyber Legacy that is making sense to me in terms of how they are moving around the map. Like for Khan, they put Morphling mid because Magical was there and they know there's no vessel. Okay, it's pretty safe for him to inhabit this part of the map. The Beastmaster is zoning two heroes top. He's taking a tier 1 by himself and then the dive bottom just fails. So like, what has gone well for Cyber Legacy in like the last five minutes? Because I'm, I'm not really seeing a whole heck of a lot here. I'm waiting for, you know, maybe the DK to get blank, but he's still far away. Uh, the Jakiro is still level five. Did the Rubik take the tone, by the way? Did you? Uh, good question. I'm not sure. <laughs> he, he must have. Yeah, because uh, like, like, even with Macro Pyre, there's no guarantee. Right? Like, there, there is a chance that there could be a swap uh, available when the next Chrono comes out. Because it's still over a minute. The Avengers 4, maybe he has a Tome. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't actually work. Okay, he doesn't have it. So if he doesn't have Tome, maybe there will be you know, without swap. But as soon as that spell comes up, it's going to be the same story as game one, where, like, how many Chronos did we see where he just only killed the support? Like, five? Six, maybe? I Yeah... You're right, it is definitely trending very much in favor of Khan. I, I guess it feels like the Beastmaster hasn't completely taken over yet. Like, they just killed that Tier 1 tower top. It's 11 minutes. Not particularly early uh, compared to some of the averages we've seen with Beastmaster in the offlane. They're not, like, getting pummeled. It's 3 to 1 at 11 minutes, so... They're, they're, they're trying they to clean time. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, they, they just need time. I mean, it, it looks bad because you're, you're giving a map control against a team with a Beastmaster and a Morph. And, you know, last game, I kind of doubted their timing because of the TB and, like, how scary he was in that game and how the Chronos never really felt that good. But they still managed to turn it around. Nerds. So if they did it once, do it again. I also think there's a good chance this bench is... Not level six. Let's see. Is that the, is that the tome coming? Oh, it is. All right. Never mind. He must have bought it right after the pause because I checked his courier and I didn't, didn't see it. Oh, he's his courier is six slotted. That is yeah, so dude. many items. This thing's yoked. All right. Well, Vange just got a nice power spike. Jeez. Uh, Cheshire Cat. What happened there, buddy? In a little bit deep. See, these are the things that make me feel like it's not that bad for Cyber Legacy. Yes, the current game state is not in their favor, but you're getting a free kill on the Beastmaster at 11 minutes. Is he just a little overextended there? I guess he had a ward down, so felt a little safer. Yeah, I mean, that type of death, when everything on your team is down, like someone's going to die on the map, right? No exorcism. You don't even have moonlight yet. Um, so it is kind of expected that there would be some kind of move on the map for Cyber Legacy to take control. And, you know, you're the obvious target if you're the only one showing in light. That, well, yeah, that's it's, just kind of like a. It's I, a my question thing. is why is he showing there? It's like the tower's down. Your teammates aren't anywhere nearby. You don't have cooldowns. There's no objective here anymore. So just go farm the jungle or something. Am I crazy? Am I? Have I just been casting with you too long, Draskal? So I'm nitpicking here. I mean, you have to nitpick if you're at this high level. <laughs> you don't have a choice. It's like you either nitpick every play that you make, or you just stagnate. That's kind of how it works. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the important thing is to take away the correct thing from the play, which I feel like a lot of people struggle to do. In that situation, I feel like someone was going to die, but he was the most obvious target because of where he was on the map and the fact that he was one of the only heroes showing. So yes, he should have been maybe a bit more aware of that. But just don't... Yeah, you, you can't be... It's kind of hard to always take away the correct thing. Well, it's subjective it's, too, because it's relative to like it's all it's all relative. You did this, so the other person did that. But if you hadn't done that, maybe he would have reacted differently, and then that would have created yeah. an option. Like it very quickly turns into a million threads. I think in in this specific situation, he probably should have not been there, uh, like backed a bit, because he had like Hawk and Ward Vision. It can bait you a little bit, so that's understandable as well. But because his team was also under tower, if they make a play on mid, it's much less likely to succeed. You know? But you you are in no man's land. Oh yeah. And now they are trying to push this advantage. Uh, now the Chrono comes out. Okay, Cheshire Cat. He takes the bulk of the damage. He's gonna go down. Now they go into Naive. Does still have the Aegis, of course. Swap from Excel. That's the first one. Now he'll fall. Playing a good support Venge. Keeps the Aegis alive. So Again, it's that oh, that was a, a pretty aggressive movement from Khan. Yeah, I don't think they were expecting the vessel to be out either. Even Magical, when he had his urn, he had uh, the orchid on his quick buy for a while. So I thought for a little bit he was actually just going to skip or forego the, the vessel altogether in, in favor of the orchid. But he decided to go back, and that forces the morph out of the fight just straight away. You don't have a dispel for that, you just have to. All right, now the initiation hit. Pikachu does not have an exorcism here. They drop the roar on the DK. A lot of follow-up damage there. Magic missile. Okay, got a DK. Link dagger up uh, now on the beast. Whoa, big wave form in. Big numb. Yeah, both teams just really clawing for map control, I guess, is the way that I would say it. 15 minutes, about to see some bounties. Yeah, Dream's back on his Midas shenanigans again, he's almost got Maelstrom. Okay, look at that. Same build. What an arrow. Is he okay, though? Not enough damage. Oh, the, the silence? silence? The silence? They've got him. Ouch, that hurts. Yeah, if the silence hadn't been there. But nice positioning there. Nice comboing of spells. Uh, get a really important kill. The prize is mine. Come in in the meantime, and bottom magical is just kind of hanging out, doing his thing. They have ghosts for this if they want to pop it. Yeah, you will. Gonna... Tower. Radiant exorcism. He just has what, like two minutes left? Is under right. Uh, let's take a look at the timer here. Yep, two minutes, ten seconds. Radiant structures. It expires when it says Rosh Roshan may respawn in three minutes. I couldn't remember. It's one of those things where, like, I'm yeah. really bad at timing Rosh. Like, I, I know I'm bad at it, so I always second guess myself. Uh oh, arrow in the roar, magical. Magic missile, that's a lot of stun lock. He actually does live, and whoa, Pikachu dies in exchange. Trying to chase down magical, can they find him? Radiant's middle tower. Arrow. Almost, there it is, the blink. Oh, the taunt. Excel dies somewhere in the back, and the great chase on the magical, no! Dream, no! Oh my gosh. He needs to be An careful. abysmal chrono. Yeah, he needs to be real careful about this. One more time walk in a bad way, and he could have just fed too. I don't use the word abysmal very often, Draskal. That he was, was I think he was assuming that there were heroes hugging the tree line to just break vision or whatever. Went for the big brain play. That way. Yeah, he went for the 200 IQ chrono. I mean, you know what they say, shit happens. It wasn't a good chrono. I don't think he would even think that it was a good chrono, but it, it was... Uh, <laughs> I, no. It, the fight, they have the momentum right because they kill the DP immediately, and he just wants it all. You see, he's got like the, the red in his eyes. He just, he wants everything from that fight because it would be so huge if that chrono connected. You know? Yeah. There was definitely a big reward there. So I, I respect the, you know what? I went big because if it worked out, the payday would have been well worth it. It might have still been the positive expected value play. I'll certainly give you that. A mid lane. Oh, 
Oh, not damage. I think so. Bottoms are burning. The stickiness of that macro pyre. What a great buff that was to Shakiro, by the way. That it lasts yeah, for two seconds after you walk out. Shakiro's nasty right now. Very good hero. Lingering. It's a guaranteed, what, like, 100 extra damage before mitigation? So it'd be like 150 base Magikaris? Yeah, something like that. It just, it used yeah, to feel so bad as Shakira when you drop your ult and they just literally walk two steps to the side and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, you Glad just raise I your eyebrow and you go, what if I just walk one unit this way? <laughs> and you just get really sad. Here, from Khan. What are they looking? I guess they're looking for the they, void, but. Do they know magicals here? here? I don't think Shashire so. Cat, Die, way far away from the other two. Yeah, they know what's up. The courier. They actually have oh, one in the river. The yeah, classic. there was one in the river that spotted the courier flying from Peekaboo's. Definite that misplay. Arrow? Whoa, actually a little bit close onto Magical. He is in deep, and now they've found him. He was farming in enemy territory. The double astral step onto the low ground. He makes it. A, a little close there, but he knows his limits. Yeah, you see that kind of stuff in pubs all the time, by the way. Couriers flying over wards oh, yeah. when you're smoked. And you're just like, wait, but I need my item. Then your smoke fails, and you're like, wow, I wonder why the smoke failed. Yeah. Yeah, there's this weird psychological thing that's happened since they gave everybody a courier. Where everybody just kind of stopped caring about microing couriers. Big Num now, he's going to get caught trying to take back the outpost. Naive, he'll go ahead and morph into the Grand Magus. Now onto Dream. Magic Missile, not disjointed. Swap back. Chrono, and not going to yield a hell of a lot. He will set after setup. Silence, Dream does make it to the low ground. Radiant and Hot Pursuit, though. Another swap from Excel. Aggressive from Khan. They burn a lot for this, and they actually don't get that much. It's just the Rubik that they start arrow. Okay, that arrow will set it up. Now they get DK, and Cyber Legacy will make it back. Whoa, Void Spirit. Does not go back in. There's a lot of map pressure right now, but they do know the Exorcism will be down. Well, with the buyback for Rubik, it ends up being over a 1k swing, so it is definitely a win for Khan. Yeah. This timing Not a will, big one, though. This timing will end up pretty nice for them, because the Roshan variants will more than make up for the lack of Exorcism, which means basically that his ult's going to be back up by the time Roshan's up, or at least it should be, so that way they can still contest. It's probably one of the last engagements they can take before having to like wait for Rosh, because Roshan can have huge implications for a team like Khan, when you're playing against things like Chrono, it's an additional save, basically. Your just comes back to life when they get chrono instead of being dead or having to be swapped or whatever. So that's always a nice thing to have. An E-Blade on Naive will be nice. He's yeah. uh, not that far, about halfway. Shit's gonna get real scary when that E-Blade comes out because there are just no save items on Cyber Legacy at all. Like, the Jakira bought a Veil. They're like fully committed for the, the damage output. They don't they don't care about saving. It's like, no, we're gonna kill you before you kill us. Oh big honor here. Shara trying to save him, but no, the arrow from downtown. Radiance bottom tower. That poor Rubik. And even Rubik, yeah, he's trying to get Aether Lens. So no Yules, no glimmer. You're definitely right. Yeah, not really anything that can do about it. The only type of save you can do in that situation is like body block the arrow, but then you're putting yourself at risk. You know, it's a Rubik. Probably just let him die. Sorry, Ruby. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Uh, with the die back on Big Num, he's actually a sideline for quite a while. Still 40 seconds. Magical. Oh, he's standing on a ward. Dog. That's a great ward right there. I like Obviously, the position. Dyer had vision also. Yeah, I like the positioning of Khan. Like, playing on the high ground is always one of those plays where people, if you look at it, you go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You're just on the hill. But again, in game, like getting people to play on top of hills and stuff when you are occupying a certain place on the map is a huge deal because vision advantage is everything. And forcing people into choke points, you know, we saw how devastating that can be in last game when Khan walked up a hill and just basically all died because Cheshire Cat blinked into it. Playing on top of hills and waiting to break smokes and sitting in the trees to break smokes and all these plays, you know, they add up. Oh. 
Dream is still farming well, and now making progress towards the BKB. As you said last game, this uh, build with the Midas Maelstrom is a bit of a two birds and one stone. It is a great damage build, but it's also really good for farming. Maelstrom lets you clear out creep camp, uh, camps and uh, split push. But he wants the BKB. Feels like he needs to live to make sure he gets off the perfect chrono. Perfect Chrono is a tough ask this game, by the way. Very tough ask. Yeah. yeah. If he can hit Venge and Morphling, that's that's the dream. Venge, Morphling, and Beast. That's the real dream. Yeah. That's the fantasy. If that happens, there was definitely a mistake. <laughs> on Conqueror. That, that should never happen. Um, also, the Orchid is out on Magical. I like that he went for the Spirit Vessel first. Uh, very key against both Mor both Morphling and the Death Prophet. But Orchid also a uh, big asset for CL. They'll pressure the Spirit too, but it is going to cost them a Roche. And this is Roche too, so Aegis Cheese as the BKB also comes out for Pikachu. Three little Roshan here. Khan going to be happy with that. Uh, I mean, Chrono's up, BKB on Dream. Did you mention the BKB? Was I just uh, spacing yes. up? Yes, I did. I was spacing up. All good. Uh, sometimes I watch the game and I'm like thinking about the game and not always like 100% listening because it's just. Oh, I'm with you. That's how it works sometimes. All right, smoke here on okay. Dream. Oh, the immediate BKB though. Chrono Roar kind of mitigates it, but I think Dream still gets the safety net that he needs. Now the BKB Death Prophet running into the back line. Slayer and Petty Shara both getting a bit low. They still have a tier one tower here. They'll get a little extra armor. Pikachu, how far are we gonna go? Loses the DK, they find Slayer, but it's only a Jakiro. Honestly, I think that's a win for CL. His reaction time there was very fast on Dream. Like he BKB within like what quarter of a second, half a second of the smoke reveal. Dyer's bottom tower. So really good stuff. Radiant's Not gonna. I mean, the BKB charge having to be used kind of sucks because it's a uh, quite a long cooldown. Wait, does the cooldown still change? Doesn't it? Am I crazy? Am I living in the past? I think you might be. Void is dead, so we'll have a moment to look it up afterwards. And now the counterplay, Excel. He's gonna be in some trouble as is Pikachu, I think. Though Naive is here. He's got the first damage, the E-Blade, and it's going to bring down Big Dumb once uh, he comes back into the regular form. All right, bought a yeah, little bit of time, but Petty Shora also you. dies. Oh, okay. I thought they changed that. It doesn't list it on the item, uh, like, yeah. directly, but it just says... Oh, you're right, it just says it on it. Okay. You would think that it would say like 70, 65, 60, blah, blah, blah. Is that what it is? Is it still five seconds per use? It's something like that. <laughs> I, I don't remember all the exact numbers, you know? You just, I, a lot of the game is played by feel. Roar here. So now Magical's in trouble. He might still be able to make it out. Gets up to the high ground. Dissimilate. Very good. But, uh... Khan getting much more out of that fight. Chronosphere's available now, so maybe... Maybe Cyber Legacy could still make something happen against this Aegis. They've still got a wild deal with it. Two and a half minutes. Yeah, they do have the Chrono. I mean, there are situations where even against Aegis, you could theoretically Chrono in a way that would win you the fight. Like killing the Beast and the Venge or whatever in a Chrono would be great. Um, the one scary thing is like defensive E-Blade can actually be a little bit of a problem here. Like if the guy gets E-Bladed or whatever in Chrono, even if there is no swap, it right. can be kind of annoying. I, I don't mean to interrupt here, but I think this might be a bad tooltip on the BKB because Is it's 7.08. It? it was changed to just 70 seconds instead of scaling from 80 to 55 in five second intervals. Okay. So we might see a fight here, so we'll have to. It wouldn't we'll surprise me. It wouldn't be the first time it tooltip was wrong. Yeah, Slayer down bottom. They found him. Magical's nearby. This is a really weird fight. They're super spread out. I think CL are going to get backstabbed. The Morphling comes charging in. Chrono on two. Perfectly placed from Dream. They sidestep the arrow. DK walks into it, though. Oh, Petushora, that's not great. They'll still get Cheshire Cat, I think. But it's going to cost the Magical, and this fight will not go the way CL wanted. The backstab from Khan will be effective. And I think Naive getting dangerously close to that critical mass that will take us to a game three. Yeah, that was a uh, near perfect execution there from Khan, like spell usage wise. I think the one thing they, they might have been able to do differently is swap the beast instead of the Morphling, because Morphling still had Aegis. 
And that way, like, you force the guy to attack the guy with the Aegis instead of, you know, Beastmaster just dying. It's a small thing, but well, one little thing they could have maybe done a bit differently there. And how long? Okay, so one minute on the Aegis. And, I mean, no Chrono for about two minutes. I mean, they won't lose barracks, I don't think, with the Aegis, but yeah. quickly getting out of control. Up top, we're going to see it go on to Dream. Outpost controlled by the Radiant. Silence, they force the BKB. Dream now looking to turn onto Excel, and that'll be a freebie. Tree line we go, TP, he's good. Okay. Uh, so just to go full circle on the BKB, yeah, that was 7.08, and then it's, there haven't been any other changes to it except 7.20 when they increased the recipe to 14.50, so plus 75. So BKB okay. actually hasn't been changed much, and uh, I think that's just a relic of that. Still wrong. So, yeah. Uh-oh, freebie on the magical. Yeah, the tooltip's wrong, but the cooldown thing is right. You know, that part is accurate. Another arrow. Gilger. He is alone here. Well, he does have uh, Naive nearby. Telekinesis back, the double hop. Dolger not going to live on this one. They had detection anyway. Yeah, that's that's one of those situations where as the core, you just look at your support and you go, sorry, bud. Like, this one is uh, not a situation I can help with. But, you know, Khan getting further and further ahead. Um, these fights are just... It's really hard for Cyber Legacy to... Like, even with that Chrono they had in the previous engagement bottom, they had so much time in the Chrono to hit heroes, and they were still really only able to get, like, what? They, they killed one hero on Khan, and they lost four? Like, I, I don't know if this kind of lineup is going to have the, the kind of, like, damage and, like, hitting ability that they actually need to go later on into the game, because who's going to kill more? Yeah, like, who's, exactly. who's going to kill the, the DP as well? And it's a different conundrum, too. It's like last game against TB, you mentioned all that magic damage the Void could itemize to sort of counteract the insane amount of armor and survivability that DP ha or uh, TB has against all that physical. Now, Morph Lane, unless you catch him on, like, a really bad morph or something, like with the E-Blade and everything else, he's, he's just hard to burst down. I, I don't know that MKB is the same sort of counter item that you go, oh, okay, we got this now. Yeah. I guess Spirit Vessel is, is a key part of it, but... Well, Vessel is I'm a lot less effective well. when the Manta's out. Because, like, yeah, as soon as works. the Vessel is applied, you're just going to immediately remove He is going for Satanic 2 on the morph, so... I, have, like, great and I forget, new question here. Can you morph while in Chrono? What, I don't... I forget what Chrono counts It as. works if you have morphed before the Chrono lands, but you can't activate anything. Gotcha. Okay, so you got to be preemptive. We'll see a kill onto the Jakiro. Swap to set that up. Or wait, did they change that too? Crap, they changed Morph a few that. times. Yeah, I know. That's what that shit, I really... Like, I don't play Morph, like, at all. So, the last thing that I remember is that we're... Morph would actually be uh, stopped for a while in stun, even if you had already started it, and then they changed it back to where you just Morph... Yeah, I think you just Morph when you're stunned, if you've already used it. I'm pretty sure. I think so, too. That's my most recent memory of it, but who knows? Chase here going on, naive, looking hungry. Got the Mind Breaker as well. Another great neutral item. Hands of the Morphling. There's a double damage on the DK, though it's about to expire. 8K net worth lead now. Let's check in with our robot friends. Oh, good. 17% for Cyber uh, Legacy. So one bash it's away just... from victory. No damage. They just don't have damage. Like that's that's literally their entire lineup's problem. They have stuns. They have catch. They have all these like ways of starting a fight. They just don't have any punching power. Like this this oh, no. void needs to buy like a he's gonna MKB go or a again. rapier or something. He's, I know, he's putting a lot a lot of faith into his. But at least he's got the enchanted quiver. That's a little bit of a damage boost. Yeah, four hundred every five. It's not. It's actually pretty good. Like even on melee here. Um, I've been flamed in a couple games for using this as a position one melee carry, and it's like actually not a meme if you don't have better items, especially if you don't have uh, the orbit destruction or anything. Yeah, it's no, it's an okay sure. placeholder. There are definitely times where this will be your best damage item. Like if you don't have uh, what is it, Mindbreaker, Herb, or any of these other items. And the other thing too is it's great on heroes with slower attack speed. Like Mindbreaker yeah, yeah. becomes great if you have like crazy attack speed because you just flat added damage per hit.
Radiance um, bottom but, tower. you know, in this attack. case, if there isn't anything better, then yeah, absolutely. It's better than nothing. And I think the orb makes more sense than the DK anyway, because he's hitting the towers. Radiance structures yeah, that's fortified. True. And part of the orb also is slow, and boy, Radiance cares a little tower. bit less. Hit people in Chrono. Has fallen. And he is really committed to the Lincolns. He's uh, basically bought out. Just one piece left. And Morph already uh, like half an item ahead of him. Satanic up next. Radiant so from beefy to tanky. Yeah, I don't know how a game like this, like if it just stalemates, both teams are farming. I don't know if there's ever really a point where Cyber Legacy are, are going to like recover doing that. You know what I mean? Like I feel like a play needs to happen. They need to get an objective or you know, like that backstab we saw a conduit or whatever, something like that. Nice roar. Morph's coming in. Hero doesn't hit anything. Magical, still ready to fight. Oh, there was like two was fights. Used. Yeah, oh, I was looking down bottom. Yeah, yeah I was, I was looking at top, so I got you. Don't worry. Yeah, it looks like up top's going to be the only death. But CL do force out an exorcism, so not all bad. Kind of surprised they were able to make such a clean getaway. Yeah, that was nice. Oh yeah. yeah, I also can't read. The BKB says duration decreases with each use, not cooldown. Oh man, that's both. So yes, the duration. <laughs> Alright, it's a good tool tip. So you have to get some schoolhouse rock in the here. The ending of this story, Draskal, is that yes, you were living in the past. It does okay. not reduce cooldown. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> I feel like this could be a YouTube series. Two boomers read Dota items. Reading is tough sometimes, man. Those are my favorite moments in the Purge patch notes, where he spends 10 minutes doing math on something that he realizes he read wrong. Oh, absolutely. It's always a good time. Now Pikachu mid. Oh, this is a nice setup. Swap from Excel. A great save. Naive in the back line trying to get the Rubik. Excel will still fall first. Chronosphere comes down. Can they actually kill Pikachu? He's BKB'd and pretty tanky. They do get him. Buyback from the DP now. Rubik also falls. I guess he bought back with no Exo just to secure Roche. I mean, that has to be the only... I think so. It's a two for two. Magical was the other one that went down. He probably yeah. could have held it, to be honest, because... So in these type of situations, you have the outpost, right? Like, even if they bought back on the Void, you'd have at least, like, 10 seconds to buy out TP. I'm kind of surprised that he, he, he bought back there, actually. Because they don't... They definitely don't need him for the actual road. He solely yeah. buys back for the purpose of, like, flexing and saying, don't come over here, we're gonna get it. But Cyber Legacy, even in the, the situation that Magical had buyout, I... Like, even then, you can buy out late, you know? You don't have to do it instantly. Right. The net worth lead hasn't grown that much. Like, uh, look at that graph, and Cyber Legacy have at least stalled things. This hold might be difficult without Chrono. Still 95 seconds, and the Exorcism's back up. Did they? No, they didn't use the Refresher Shard. All right, so they have two Exorcisms here. This is going to be tough. What's your, your out here? I'm gonna cut top off. So that would probably be the best thing to do. Another arrow just hits Dream in the middle of it. No. Um, Alright, there's the glyph. So tier 3 falling quickly. Of course, Naive in the front lines here. Satanic is up. They're gonna try to use the DK to take some of the heat. He'll DKB. They get Naive pretty low, actually. But Magical, now he's gonna be done. That's the dieback. Backdoor protection for a moment, but gets broken again. Is now Big Num falls. He has a buyback and wants to burn it. They've at least got Pikachu to use his BKB, but oh wait, he's got a refresher shard. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Lloyd trying to pressure as hard as he can. He gets to the tier two tower. So now is the question, Draskal. Do you just refresher shard and keep this going, or do you save it and reset? I think I think the safer play. I think the safer play is to save it only because you are in such an advantage position. So, like, let's say he does it and he just pops it. He's basically wasted half the cooldown on Exo already, right? He's like 60 seconds off. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you could do either way and it would probably be fine because they just don't have Chrono and they just simply can't fight without it. I'm gonna go for it. All right, the Void Spirit. He's back. 
there's the I mean, it's fine, like I said. They're, they're just like, even if they do Chrono now, they're probably Chrono's up. Make it. The final hold. Can they do it? Cyber Legacy, they'll jump in. BKBs popped by both. They need Pikachu. They gotta take heat off this barracks. 300 HP is the void stun. No Chrono for you, buddy. He does not have buyback. Megas come out. And now things look rough. Cheese eaten by Pikachu, and that will demoralize CL into a GG. And Drafsky, baby, we got a game number three. Yeah, I mean, this could have very easily been the result of game one as well. If Khan had just played a little bit better on their high ground push. So it's not really surprising that they take a second game. Um, I think the Void just isn't going to work anymore. Like, at least not the way that, like, they're drafting and, and building around it. So they... they basically sacrifice all of their ability to save any core by itemizing like Veil on the Jakiro. You know, they have to go vest.
Radiant Dire Team, team ban. ban. Ten seconds remaining. Radiant Team Ban. All right, party people, welcome back to game number three, Cyber Legacy, Khan going at it again, the decider. Draskal's back with us again. He was confident in Khan at the end of game number two. Draskal, has anything changed since the break? 10 seconds remaining. Um, not that I know of. I mean, unless Void Five gets picked or doesn't remaining. get picked, I mean. I think that the Phoenix ban is new. And Radiant team pick. Not sure if they're going to open void again. Those are the only two things. All right. All right. Well, we got the Rubik here for Khan. Wait, did they ban Vanilla? I know they banned Eng for sure. I'd have to go back and look at the bans. I want to say Venom was banned, but I'm not 100%. Well, hey, before you here, bud, I've got the tools, I've got the power. Do bands were Phoenix and Doom, Ten as well as remaining. Enchantress and Venomancer. Okay, so Phoenix was Five banned seconds last. Remaining. Yes. So um, same heroes, but banned by different team, different pairings. Therefore. Yeah, I'm curious what route Cyber Legacy is going to take if they don't just snap up the void again. I know Dream can play other heroes, but you know you have to have a lot of confidence in your one player to first phase his hero two games in a row. Yep. And I would honestly, I I found it kind of odd that Cyber Legacy felt so confident in first phasing it after how they won the first game. You know what I mean? Okay, they are gonna right. go with DB. No more void. I like it. Now the ultimate like hilarity would be if Khan just picked the void. I mean, I don't think they will, but uh, they do have Ten one of the counters remaining. to the hero on their team already. The Rubik. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, more uh, the Rubik is a counter, but I, I look at Venge as more of a Radiant a playstyle counter because you can protect Chrono relatively easily by just hitting Dial W after you Chrono, but um, you can't really do anything about swap. Like defensive things that are used on heroes are. Uh, are really hard for Void to deal with, like swaps or like Oracle yeah, ulti or whatever, sometimes Shallow Grave if you have that hero. But uh, swap is really annoying because not only does it stop the hero from taking damage, but it moves them out of harm's way completely, assuming the Venge is in the right spot. So it's like, in my opinion, it's one of the hardest counters. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right that when you look at counters Ten and stuff, things like swap become top of the stack at a certain point like yeah chrono Five counters pretty much everything remaining. you swap somebody out of a chrono what's the play after that that's kind of where it ends yeah. it ends with venge gets what she wants out of it there is so one definitely right technically better save in the game but it's on a trash hero and what, that's false Pudge. promise oh hook okay yeah you can hook them out of the chrono Radiant but pudge is such a bad hero that i don't think you'll ever see it picked <laughs> like that hero is just ooh. Ice that Frog really killed them. Most things don't work in Chrono Light. Like, you can't force staff somebody out of a Chrono. Yeah, You know, exactly. you can't... Mobility tools, hook, I guess, is sort of like swap. It's a uniquely positioned Ten seconds type remaining. spell. Or Pudge, man. Yeah, he, uh, he was starting to make a little bit Five of a run. Seconds remaining. There was like a window there, well, like a year ago, maybe six months ago, something like that, where he was so tanky. I was seeing him a lot in my pubs, and his win yeah. rate was going up. They gave him... Then uh, they gutted that, and he can't deny himself, and it's just over. Yeah, they gave him the one-two punch because his flesh heap used to have the regen, like the HP regen tied to it, yep. which gave him an actual laning phase. And then they took that away and then also took Rotteneye in the same patch. That's just like the harshest set of nerfs I've ever seen on a hero. Like that was super heavy handed to just do both. Like so even one. Go ahead. I was going to say even just one of them would have been enough. Like, yeah, you didn't. He was already dead, Ice Frog. You didn't have to shoot him twice. 
One thing that Trent and I have spent a lot of time looking at are like the different win rates of heroes across the different skill brackets. And it's pretty fascinating to see how, how that trends with like skill level. And when you look at it, there are certain heroes that have to be balanced around the fact that, yeah, they're not that relevant in the pro scene, but they are picked so much in these lower tier games. Like Wraith King was like that, where he was just dumpstering Herald, Crusader, Radiant Guardian brackets picked. for a while Diamond there. Picked. It's like, why did we nerf him? He's not winning pro games. That shit ain't for pro games, man. You got to remember how many, what, like what percentage of the Dota pubs are played at those lower brackets. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, the game can't just be balanced universally around one like level of player. Yeah, but Pudge is also in that category. He is still minutes. like one of the most played heroes uh, across all, all the skill brackets if you look outside Five of Divine and Immortal. So. Oh yeah, he's always been that way, right? Ever since I think the... so, yeah. The, the big one that's changed is Drow. She used to be the like queen of the castle all over the place, and now she's not getting the same love that she used to. Radiant team. Pick. I wonder why she's picked so often in low MMR. It's kind of weird to me. I think she's just the face of the game for marketing. Beastmaster. Yeah, that could to be. Toby right. helped us out a lot with that as well. So you know. Uh. Beastmaster. Tied. Odd. Beast. Yeah, some snap picks here. So. The response is just strange because you can't really roar tied. Tied naturally. Okay, so when we were talking the other day um, about heroes that are, are good against Beastmaster, Tide was pretty much the top of that list. Yeah. Because you can't roar him. Crack and shell negates like all the damage that your minions can do. You are incredible counter initiation to him. So if he gets a roar and you have like blink or something, you can kind of just go into the fight and just stop everything, right? And plus, he's also really good against TB. Base damage reduction on Anchor Smash is fantastic. Um, he can just be wherever he wants to be in this game, and the only thing that really scares him is Magic Burst, which they only have Lich and Tiny. So he will eventually get to a point where those heroes will not be able to kill them on their own anymore. And uh, I'm just a little, I'm kind of scratching my head about the Beastmaster. I'm not sure about this one. I mean, maybe they have some idea in mind that I'm just not privy to, which is entirely possible. Uh, and now Khan going for the Spectre. It's a... Uh... It's a pretty good Spectre game. They're going to have to get their lanes right, though. Otherwise, your Spectre is just going to lose your tower like very, very quickly. So this could be a game where we see some musical lanes. I think of the matches you and I have cast, it's been relatively static. But this strikes me as one, if Beastmaster gets the matchup against Spectre, it's great for Cyber Legacy. If he gets the matchup against Tide, that's great for Khan. Yeah, so you definitely, if you are Khan, I think it is more important for them to get the Tide and the Spectre in the right lane than it is for Cyber Legacy, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Because like the, the Tide is important, not in just in the sense that it can, you know, hold up against Ten a Beastmaster. Seconds, it's that remain. those towers won't die because he'll be there. And not a lot of heroes Five can do that. Remain. So if they don't want to lose map control against a Beastmaster team and a TB, which I, God, I would not want to lose map control against Cyber Legacy's lineup right now. Um, I think it's very, very important for them to get the lanes right. Final bands, Pugna and Viper both taken out. Looks like both teams looking for a mid laner. You know, I don't mean to cut you off, but this happened. This is happening again. Where is Khan's damage? Yeah, you're not. That's like the thing about Where, this Venge. Like they, they which one of these heroes does damage? This Vengeful Spirit like every Radiant game and then back. and that's fine but you have to compensate for the fact that like even with their off laners too they th they like need uh, a bursty mid hero these are like the kind of guys that they've got a kitchen that's stocked with all the stuff you put on the food but they don't have the actual food they don't have the yeah. meat that you put the condiments on but they've got Ten every seconds, condiment really? i mean cyber legacy has tons of damage like they got meta tb they got chain yeah. frost tiny combo Five dude they got meat for days they're purists they're just rocking the a1 and that's it yeah, I, I can't hate it. Like it's, it's good. I'm, I'm just looking at Khan's lineup, and I'm like, well, now you, you need like a queen, or maybe actually Invoker would be solid this game. It's very hard for Cyber Legacy to get to the back line. Uh, you could even do Exort, I think, if you wanted to. You really like the Invoker, yeah? So, oh, uh, dude, whenever I see, okay, so I'm, I used to be a mid player, right? I used to exclusively back, in, back when it. you were young back when my hands worked no nah, but uh i used to play mid a lot and the games where it's a huge tell on if it's an invoker game or not are when there's like very very low amounts of heroes on the enemy team that can get in your face and really no one on cyber legacy does that until blinks and even then you have like swap save you have tide hunter yeah, like there are spells that are going to be used for your defense they are going to ban the queen which is obviously the go-to here 
Radiant um, but I, I do like it because it, it offers them uh, like damage and control, but they're going to go with the storm. Okay. Uh, this fixes some of their damage issues. Yeah, it does. I, I would maybe say this looks potentially greedy for Khan. Yeah, my concern is that it can get very hard countered and have a very tough time in lane. But I guess saying that a lot of the counters are banned, like Viper's out, DP's out, no Pugna, no Queen. Remaining. Uh, no cheese bat rider and I've so. also observed this trend with storm where even if he has a bad lane a lot of games It feels like it doesn't matter that much because he just jungles and he jungles so fucking fast that yeah It's not ideal, but he still has a game Yeah, he it's not like he's gonna get smushed out of the map, but he will you know Depending on what cyber legacy pick there is potential for some some bad uh, Matchup here. Okay, it's a void spirit. That's not it's not the worst that bad. Yeah, I think storm should be able to hit. It's a bit of a skill matchup void has options, but so does the storm Yeah, this is actually this is fine for storm. I Think that it might be I Mean it, it is a skill thing I'm trying to think of the last time I saw this matchup because both these heroes are played quite a bit in high MMR uh, in the mid lane so I want to say that it's pretty even. Yeah. Because Void can negate a lot of the auto attack harass damage by just using his E and stuff. He'll still take overload, obviously, but I think the advantage comes that the Storm can push the wave a lot harder because his nuke is a lot more mana efficient than what the Void Spirit has. So it should help him maybe control runes a bit better. And from the side of Khan, there's really not going to be a whole lot of rotation. However, there is a tiny on Cyber Legacy, and that could be the difference maker in the mid lane. You get tossed into the tower or whatever, can be a very, very easy death. Very true. Interesting drafts. I I like it. Um, I don't know I which think draft all, I like better. I think all things considered, I believe I like cons a little bit more. Just because I feel like... It, okay, so if the lanes go well, and the Tidehunters against the Beastmaster, I feel like Petishar is not going to have really a whole lot of influence, or at least not nearly as much as he would like. And they're going to have to expend a lot of resources to deal with Tide. And I think that's exactly what Khan want. Like, they want to make the Tide a target so that the, you know, the Spectre and the Storm can can have somewhat of a game. But you can't just really afford to have your Beastmaster just shut off by one hero. It's kind of the opposite of what you want when you pick this guy. You want him to mow down buildings. You want to enable your five man. You want him to bully people just straight up out of the lane. This definitely so. strikes me. I, I like the global sort of presence that Khan have with Storm and Spectre, but heroes that can get across the map pretty, pretty fast. Like if they get ahead, you know, if they have that 60, 65 percent map control, I think they can be very oppressive with these heroes. Storm and Spectre are so painful to play against when they're like rolling. I, so I could I see it maybe ball out of control, but exactly. the Cyber Legacy draft just feels maybe a little easier to execute. I think Khan could run into greed problems. Like conversely, if they start to fall behind, they're they're going to be starved for space on the map because even Tide, he's not the greediest. Dog. kind of one of the big hallmarks of being greedy, right? Their mm -hmm. lanes are just kind of weak. And then they won't be able to clear waves, so what'll happen is they'll just, every time they make a move, they'll take a ton of chip damage, they'll take more chip damage, tier ones will just eventually die to like attrition, or maybe they just get completely forced out of lane, and they can't push anywhere else fast enough to make a play. So the thing about Khan's team is they have a lot of wave clear, right? Like Rubik can clear the wave, Storm can clear the wave, Tidehunter can clear the wave. Having three heroes that are pretty decent at killing creeps, like that's that's enough in my opinion to be able to warrant having some heroes that might not come online ultra fast now right. if i'm looking at the lanes it does seem like cyber legacy are getting what they want they're not putting the beast against the tide i think this is a huge mistake um but we'll see i guess kind of how things play out if naive feels like he can play against beastmaster then you know power to him we'll see how it goes we'll see i think if this was a warlock or like an oracle, then the maybe begins. you can just sustain the specter enough that even though the boys are boars are annoying, she still farms. I'm not confident that Venge is the five that will be able to handle the beast master. Yeah, the, you remember <laughs> the other day when we saw the Venge feed surprise. like over and over again to the beast master boars? Was that game because one today? The, was that this morning, dude? Or, no, no, that was like two days ago. Has it happened twice? Well, we've had Venge in every fucking game today, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but uh, the last game. 
or the the game that you're talking about, they actually had Venge and the Beast on the same team, right? Because they were picking it into no, the voice. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, I think I think that's what happened. But anyway, the Spectre cannot help the Venge in this lane like at all. All you can do is throw a dagger. Dagger's probably not going to be enough to peel. When Big Nom hits level two or three, a toss back into a stun is just a dead Venge, just every time. So that's kind of like another reason why I really wanted them to put the Tide in this lane because if you're Rubik Tide against Beast Tiny. You're never dying, like ever. You're gonna get anchor smash and fade bolted. You're gonna do zero damage. You know you can't even really get to the Rubik in that lane. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Maybe maybe my understanding of this lane is not what I think it is, and, and maybe Naive will do fine. We will see, indeed. Lanes break out here. Runes went even. It looks like Excel was able to kill an Observer Ward already, so that's quite nice. Keep an eye on this mid lane as well, the Storm Void Spirit. Pikachu versus Magical. Yeah, I want to see how this lane goes too. It seems like right now Magical has the edge. Uh, he just, he's doing the normal mid thing. You know, auto attack the wave, shove it as hard as you can, get under his tower. But, uh, I mean, during the mid game, I think it's going to be a bit easier for Pikachu to play than the Void Spirit. Now, Jaskal, I got a question for you. Preference sure. here. What is your absolute favorite taunt in Dota? My favorite taunt is um, uh, the Weaver taunt. The one where he like flips upside down and... Zap one? Yeah, he just flails his legs everywhere. I don't know why, but that one just gets me. All right. It's so good. Pretty good. I'm uh, Oh, up top, Big Numb. Big Numb? Is he okay here? I think he'll make it out. Fours should help. Indeed. I'm a big fan of the backstroke tide. I know it's old. I know it's classic, but... There's something about that backstroke. I feel like it actually really does good. wear people down mentally when they see that shit over it's, and over. It's like top three. Yeah. For me, it's like the Weaver one, the backstroke, and then the uh, the Undying Thriller song. Oh, yeah. Funk of the Dead. Here we go. Uh, First Blood does come out onto Slayer. Gilgir are going to get credit for that one. Yeah, Funk of the Dead is pretty top tier. And there's like items now that taunt for you when you get like turnaround kills. I didn't. I'm not a big taunter, but now my undying taunts when I get big kills. Yeah, also courier kills and stuff. I think and low health TPs are like auto yeah. taunts. Pretty dope. Yeah, I remember it happening like a while ago in a game. I was like, wait, I didn't taunt. What the hell's happening? Yeah, I thought I was I'm going crazy. Num. I was like, did I rebind my hotkeys? What the hell's happening? Big num's he's got, fine. He's got boots. He's going the long way around. He's just trying to give beast solely XP, I guess. But uh, this pull is not. I don't know if this is really what he wanted to do. It's he's giving sort the spectre work a out, though. He's gonna get it back in well, his tower, right? Yeah, but but naive oh, is holding the wave, that. right? He's not letting it take tower damage. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, and he missed it anyway. So, all right. Yeah, that doesn't. It's not they the best. Deny range creep. That, that's like the one silver lining. But they're gonna lose like this whole wave now. Like this is actually quite bad. <laughs> The CS is even, but this should be a lot worse for Naive, I'd say. I mean, Spectre's the one pressuring right now. That's not how this is supposed to go. Yeah, when you um, when you do stuff like that, it really messes the lane equilibrium, and sometimes you end up with a bigger wave than your opponent, and uh, you can just, like, bully because of that. So, I mean, right now it seems to be going fine for the Spectre. So, I don't know if it's because of the, the way that he stopped the pull, or, like, because Big Num is spending so much time on the side, but... It might just be because it is tiny and not an actual, like, range for. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a 2v2, really. It feels like a 1v2 with tiny kind of on guard to jump in if something breaks out. Bit of a different feel. going to check top rune. Four minutes. Meanwhile, some skirmishing in the mid. Pikachu and Magical going at it. The rune is bottom. Double damage. Cured by Gilger. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, back in the mid, top back, Pikachu, he'll fall. Counter kill on the magical, though, it's gonna be close, and they find it. Gilger. <laughs> yeah, trading the mids. Both supports gonna be happy with that, getting lots of EXP. Pikachu, the big loser, though, taking the first step. Yeah, that's that hurts a lot, actually. How close is he? Okay, so he's four and a half. Uh, and then the Void Spirit is five. Yeah, five that kind of sucks, because. If the Void Spirit hits six, you can just get killed again before you get your ball, and that would be really... That's kind of like what we saw, was it game one? Was that Queen of Pain? Yeah. <laughs> here. Dive. Ooh. Denied! Slayer lives. 
Then top as well. Action everywhere. Big Num in Excel. It's going to be Excel that falls first. And again, Naive not able to chase. He definitely can feel the impact of the boars, though. Even though not able to kill the Spectre, it is preventing her from finding any kind of these chase down kills. Like, I don't know if Big Num would have died there, but 100% he lives because of the slow. Yeah, and it also does secure both the runes top for his team by getting that Venge kill, because they won't be able to contest, obviously, with the dead hero. Yep. So, nice little kill. Wrap around on bot. Dream. Gilger feels like this guy's everywhere. Charges. He's putting in the work. <laughs> yeah. So, magical is level six. Not going for any crazy dive. He wants it so bad, dude. You can feel it. Oh, they want naive. Here's the pressure. Coffee cell tiny. Level three. Naive with the TP out. Nice. Smart man. Yep, not giving away the kill. I mean, there's not much he can really do about this. Eventually, the beast is just going to take your tower. It's just something you have to accept. Uh, I think this Cheshire Cat up here might not be the same, but with the lands at the way they are. Magical is doing the math right now. I think you're totally right. And oh, he's going to get the regen spawn six minutes. Bro, is this two games in a row? This has happened. Ooh. I think it was at four minutes last time, but oh, yeah, four much. minutes. <laughs> Dream down Lot bottom again. again. Stick charges. I think he's okay. Big Num makes the rotation. Still some time on meta. Maybe the counter kill onto Gil Gear. Slowed down by Slayer. A little frost shield. There it is. Still pretty even early game here. Tier 1's still alive. It looked through the first cart wave. I would assume it'll be dead the next time. Especially Two. since... Uh, yeah, Petishar has Roar now. So whoever wants to come top, I would actually not be surprised to see Magical just make a top rotation, like push in mid, TP top with his regen, just get a kill and then just take the tower. Be a really easy move for them to make right now. It does feel like the Beastmaster's ramping up. Like, I think Khan have handled this top lane very well. Honestly, this has been better for Naive than I thought it would be, but it's just getting harder. And we don't even have maxed out boars yet. You can see they're, they're yeah. using magic missiles on the boars just to keep this lane alive. It's not too bad. Um, the big thing is, is the tiny, right? Like, if it was another four hero that wasn't tiny, I think this lane would have been much more difficult to manage. But yeah, like you mentioned, the, the still... He's barely behind the Beastmaster, to be honest. Pretty darn yeah. close, all things considered. Mid lane, little bait. Shoe. Is this a turnaround, potentially? Rubik's here. They'll pull Magical back into the tower, but he's got an Astral Step. Stick charges, infused raindrops, and a bottle. This man's got regen for days. God, they really want this eight minute rune. They have both supports mid. All right. Is it going to spawn up top, or will it just go bottom? Eight minutes, it comes out, and Excel dies, and the illusion rune spawns Radiance in the bottom position. Is under attack. Big numb. Okay, magical. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Beastmaster doing BM things up top. On there as Naive moves into the jungle. Yeah, this is the tricky part now is um, you can't really put Naive bottom. Cheshire Cat going for a dive here. He does have Ravage. Can gonna go though. Is under attack. Storm Dyer's is nearby just in case. But yeah, like, Naive would probably want to either occupy mid or bottom normally, but he can't do it against the niche. Magical. Are you a Void Spirit player, Draskal? Are you, you playing them new-fashioned heroes? A little bit. I've played them a, a little bit. I'm like yeah. an expert. Right? He's pretty dirty. I could see you getting into that. He's, um, he's really fun for like 20 to 25 minutes, and then you just fall off a cliff. Like, you, you yeah. just stop. Like, the combos that are supposed to kill people no longer kill people, and that just feels bad. Uh, damage here on a Pikachu should be fine. I don't think this will be a kill. Yeah, plenty of mana. Zips down. Yeah, you have to really maintain momentum. Like, you to to be relevant in late game, you've got to I mean, really even break, if you do, break that shit down. Like, the normal Void Spirit item progression just doesn't involve a lot of damage usually you know you see like orchid eggs bkb or like you deso yeah like sometimes deso if the game is like really lacking in cc uh you can get deso or if your team like desperately needs damage sometimes you see like spirit vessel you know like we saw previously mm -hmm. but at some point no matter how good of a game you're having you're just gonna go god i just do no damage anymore
It, it just inevitably happens every game. Four to two. Another relatively low kill score game at the laning phase. But it's okay on the Radiance doing Excel. They're looking for somebody. They're going to find a beast. Petsu, he's got the high ground. All right, zip in. Necronomicon units coming over. Naive haunts in reality. Hedushara will fall. Tiny also comes into the fray. Okay, uh, now Big Dumb's in some trouble. Well, the lead that CL had well, is gone now. Yeah, this is a... Didn't this exact same thing happen in the last game? Beastmaster, I think it was Cheshire Cat, just kind of sitting too far top or whatever, kind of just dies randomly. <laughs> yeah, I think it, almost exactly the same. In the same spot on the map, on the same team, yeah. Around the same time, yep. Well, now here up in the dire jungle, they're gonna find Magical, does have another astral step. They've got a lot of lockdown. He gets into the trees, TP, cheeky shit, not gonna work out. Naive. It was a nice try, although I'm not quite sure why he was walking up the hill alone. Maybe he just really thought he couldn't die. I don't know. It was definitely a, a strange maneuver, to say the least. Like, what's your end game there? What, what is the ideal situation walking into the woods completely alone with no vision up a hill? Maybe he's just looking for a solo pick, hoping to catch Storm on low mana, killing a stack. I don't know. That, that's yeah, it, that's right? The that's the only though, right? scenario like, in which that has a payday. That's why it's such a weird move. When you can't think of anything, like, just very obvious, usually it just means that there was not really a reason behind it. And, and typically that's seen as bad play, because if you can't immediately tell me that you did it because you saw this guy move here and whatever, and, like, he, you know, I can get this kill if he's standing here, then it just has to be. See you later, look, right? nerds. Like, just objectively. It's probably just fair so, with conventional logic. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you're just kind of... You, you, you lapse into that autopilot that a lot of players have where you just kind of say, oh, you know what? I'm really mobile. I do lots of damage. I'm just going to walk into their woods. You know, it's a very like basic thought process, but you'd be surprised how even like top players can can do that stuff. They like their autopilot is obviously at a much higher level than most people, but sometimes like I see it, it with runes the most with pro players, the fucking haste yeah. rune confidence, man. Oh, I'm unkillable yeah, it, it right now. Uh, they got a Yules, buddy. <laughs> they do have a Dispel, so... Confirmed you are not, quote, unkillable. Yeah, this, uh... We haven't talked a lot about bottom, but Cheshire Cat... Just living the life, you know? Just a thick man, down here. Anchor Smash and Creep Waves. PB yeah. can't really ever kill this guy. He's, uh... Got Big Numb okay, tossing it back or, in uh, now. Tiny can. Body box. Box, backstroke. Apparently backstroking gives you phasing, that helps. And that's it. Alright, they get tied to half HP. Very nice. He'll salve up. Yeah, very odd that he popped meta for that. Maybe they just want the tower, I don't know. I mean they are pushing into Ravage. Arcane Rune on Pikachu too. This would be a very dangerous time to push. Pikachu... Oh, he doesn't have TP, actually. Okay. Maybe if they saw him TP, they'll push. I'm not sure if they did, though. It's still hard to push into the Tide. I mean, the threat of Rabbit, yeah. sure, but... That's... He's level 9. He's big. Th this is when Tide feels the best. When you can just sit there and just be like, Yeah, go ahead. Do it. You know? Do Come it. at me, bro. <laughs> I dare you. Okay, he's actually dead. <laughs> Oh no, Chain Frost was yeah. too much. These are the two heroes that can kill him on the map. If it's TB, I, you're not scared. If it's, you know, Beast, you're not scared. If it's these two, you're scared. I clicked away as soon as you said that. When you said he's actually dead, I kind of thought you were joking. No, he actually and then can die. I realized that he died and I kind of missed the kill, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's fine, because, like, in these types of games, you'll have to buy, like, one item to live through some magic burst as Tide. And then you'll just go back to being the, you know, the unkillable melon that you were born to be. I mean, so far, it's still pretty quiet. Uh, Cyber Legacy maintain a little bit of a lead here. But, nice. Okay, he's just going straight for the Manta. 
Pretty uh, pretty standard stuff. No drums, Radiant anything like that. They're not scanning. looking to play super fast. All right, I I haven't seen this as much. I feel like Midas or drum first has still been the big go-to on Spectre in most games. Yeah, I I don't know. I think his lane was still not as free that he would want it to be to buy Midas, but I think drums would have been fine. I think the only oh. reason he went double Wraith is because they didn't lane swap, and double Wraith gives you a ton of armor. And your hero already has a lot of base HP regen, especially under a tier one. So double Wraith is just super cost efficient value, whereas drums are still a bit bigger of an investment, you know, considering how much double Wraith costs in comparison. Teddy Shara up top. They've gone fishing and they found a big one. And there's that global presence we talked about during the draft. So easy for Spectre to help out in those little engagements, hop across the map if needed. Yeah, if you're out of position against the uh, Khan, you're probably just dead. It's another reason why I kind of favor them going into this game. Because it's one thing to have vision advantage with, like, Hawk and stuff, but to be able to just jump from long distances is very hard to play against. Smoke here. Cyber Legacy infiltrating the jungle. They are going to get revealed. Nice smoke break there from Gilger. I almost feel bad. They're going to find the all chat BM. Anything, I almost feel bad. If I'm being totally honest, that voice line in here. <laughs> yeah, that like, whenever I killer. see that, even when it's not even a good play, someone does that, and I'm like, all right, I'm tilted. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. I don't know why. It's, like, I like I the Agonim's just... lines, but they've they've started to grade me a little bit. The chicken oh, bok yeah. bok one actually. But if I hear that, like, by the 20th Dyer's time in a game, I'm, I'm a little bit on it. I won't lie. But that's mine. Collapsing here on bot. Gilger gonna eat a gank. I'll eat a primal roar. That's, uh, that's all right. Ooh, are they gonna get one more? Naive does not have dagger for seven. Nice juice. That was really nice. My path was he broke vision for just the right amount of time for him to be able to sneak out of the right because of night vision. It was very well done. It just looked like he just casually stopped, but if he didn't do that, there was a chance that he would have been spotted on his way out. Now mid. This is Blink Dagger now. All right. It's a big enabler for the tiny. And book three done on the beast then. Yeah, he's able to go for the book this match. Last time, I think we saw the... Necro one into blink because they didn't really have any catch, uh, and now it's just you know straight Necro three because you already have the blink tiny, you have the void spirit. Your initiators are already kind of online, so it's really nice to be able to just go for that item because it's such a big increase in damage on heroes. Like Necros just destroy heroes because they buff the damage that they do to heroes, but they nerfed it to like everything else. Ben's just gonna feel the pain. Oh, she's gonna evaporate, like, every time. They're looking at this Tide Hunter. They have the calculator out, like, okay, can we kill this guy? He's level 11. Guess not. Let it go. Yeah, we haven't even seen a Ravage yet, right? 17 minutes. I don't no think Ravage? so. Cheshire Cat's been pretty planted down bottom. He's got a mech. And both these teams, they're just content to farm, man. You know, whenever this happens, I always have a saying two teams are just farming. One of them is wrong, just every time. <laughs> One of them should not be farming. You know, it's just up I to- I guess them. you're right. Like, so, every game has, like, somebody will do better with farm and, like, win the late game. Like, one right. team always benefits more from passive play than the other, just by nature it's, of Dota. It's not even just that. It be a big margin, but it's it, it can't be completely even. It also could be that you're farming through your power spike, right? Like, you're farming at a time where you just got a really key item, and you don't know how to use it, or you don't feel safe, or whatever. Uh, so, a little far forward there, bud. Okay, and he's gonna die to the zoo of uh, illusions and necro units. There we go. Roche's still pretty healthy. They'll drop the haunt for this. They get magical off to the side. Yeah, I was watching the back line here where Cheshire Cat's chasing him down. Ends up a one for one, but now Big Numb jumps back nice in, and they get the... Hide Hunter, no Ravage. Does have a buyback though, Pikachu low on mana. And now the chase up to high ground, Cyber Legacy, they want to keep on going. Orchid, zip back. Big Numb blinks in, looking for more, he's caught him. There's the toss back. 
Okay. Yeah. Cyber Legacy. This is uh this is the issue we talked about in the draft. Where's the damage? Does your damage. They killed one core hero on the side of Cyber Legacy. There's a book three and a meta TV out. And they didn't even expend chain frost for that. So it was just, you know, the tide got himself too low. So a Cheshire Cat couldn't ravage. Uh, the meta is down, so it is a little bit scary to keep doing this. They're gonna go up the hill though. Free kill on Excel. Another one. They need Ravage. Like, oh. their tide's still not here. Gilger? Now he's gonna get caught. Khan playing the one by one game. This is starting to feel kind of costly. Approach, 3k HP. Cheshire Cat. Cross back in again. Fly back from Rubik. Khan, what are we doing? What are we doing? They're trying to stop this Ravage. Primal Roar does it again. Pikachu still has most of his mana bar. Now they jump in onto the Terra Blade. There's the Ravage. Chain Frost finds a kill. And they also get Dream. All right, it works out okay for Khan so far. But now how about the rest of the fight? Magical trying to go blow for blow with the Spectre. Now Pikachu reinitiates and it's Big Numb that gets brought down. They'll find the Lich also, and it ends up working out pretty well for Khan. This did cost them a Rubik buyback, and they now I, I think they've got Roche? I don't I mean, know. If I was here, I would say for sure. Well, they have Medallion. That's the one thing that makes me think they might be able to. It's just that they, like, the respawn timers are so low, right? 10 seconds. Uh oh. Pretty much everyone. The storm's out of mana. Those Necro units are whomping on him. Excel comes in, and now they might turn onto Magical. Pikachu ends up being an amazing bait, but the Necro units the again creeps. shopping at the Venge. They're trying their best. The gush! Oh, the axe is not enough. Vex there. Okay. This has just turned into a battle royale for Roche. Oh my god. This is god. absolute chaos. Cheshire Cat dies again. Roche still about 50% HP, but it, it's now Cyber Legacy that move into the pit. This has taken so long, Sayori, that meta came off cooldown. That is a two minute and what, 25 second? Two minute and 35 second cooldown? Yeah, I, that was... I mean, Cyber Legacy win it, I, I guess. They don't have to burn any buybacks. They get Roche. That was absolute insanity. Both teams putting a very high value on the road. Now, Draskal, we should have talked about this at the beginning of the series, but it's even more hype here for game three. This is a big series. So we've got two groups of six in, to go into the bracket. Um, you have to be top three in your group to make it to the playoff bracket. So bottom three are eliminated. Right now, Khan are one and two, and Cyber Legacy are two and one. So if Khan win this, they actually go into like a potential tiebreak scenario, I think. Okay. If Cyber Legacy win this, then Khan are 100% eliminated. So like on Liquipedia, the other two teams are red. Khan still has a chance. So I think Khan is fighting for survival in this. They absolutely have to win to have a chance to make it into the playoff. Here we go again. All right, in on the storm. CL holding the fate of their opponents right now as they find Excel, Primal Roar. They're going to get Gilger. It's uh, two easy kills. Slayer probably going to go down in exchange. Yes, he does. Another very awkward, drawn-out fight. Storm chasing down Big Num. He'll just have to TP out. In the end, it will favor Cyber Legacy yet again. And oh, maybe not done yet. Naive. He does get taunted back. They have some tree clear. Uh-oh. Naive is in such a weird spot, but now the Ravage comes out. The mech, the taunt again. Naive sustaining. The great chase continues. They break the trees. Naive's down. Cheshire Cat trying to grab something in the back line, but it's going to end up another good fight for CL after a long chase. What is going on? Why are these fights so ridiculously like chaotic and spread out? Uh, both the teams have like they do, they both kind of suffer from damage somewhat. Like Cyber Legacy, their TB and their Beastmaster can't do much if they get anchor smashed, right? So it like completely guts all their damage if that happens. Outside of just the tiny combo and like the Lich spells. 
So when that happens, the fight is just going to be long, right? Because Khan don't have a lot of damage of their own. I'll, like, basically all of their damage is coming right now from the storm, and I guess Dyer's the tide if he has all his spells up. Attack. The Spectre only has a Manta. Like, no Diffusal or anything like that. It's 23 minutes in, so definitely falling behind in terms of itemization on this hero. And you're not really feeling Dyer's powerful until you get to your attack. second item on Spectre, because you want that, that mana burn from the Diffusal and Dyer's such, and the Desolate tower. propagating to your illusions when the hero's alone and all that stuff. So the fight's just kind of... they just stretch out because no one's really doing that much damage. Well, even TB, he's ahead of the Spectre by a good amount now, but he's got BKB, SNY, Dragonlance. Like, he's not crazy, crazy damage yet. That's yeah. I mean, the other thing about TB is that Dyer's you're all stats, right? And Anchor Smash and Fade Bolt together are just base damage reductions. Oh, yeah, so you're... It's Even Metamorph bad. itself gives you base damage. It doesn't give you added damage. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Yolger. He's in some trouble, trouble here. He is dusted up. He's dead. Under attack. Your turn. Another pick for Cyber under Legacy. Attack. Meanwhile, yeah, Dream just taking tier two. As he took bottom, he's just headed mid. It's like, I got BKB. I got Aegis. I actually have no fears right now. Yeah, this is the king of the map right here. B. Even if he gets Orchid cast on him or whatever, it won't matter that much. Uh, try to kill the Lich. We're up to the high ground. Dream for a day. Storm. Wow, is he good at snatching bounty runes. Yeah, I mean, Storm is pretty mobile. <laughs> it's the last time I checked. Gonna get them all. Well, things continuing. 18 to 12, 6K <laughs> net worth lead. Beautiful numbers right now. I wonder if Han will ever get to a stage where they deal enough damage. I mean, they can kill the supports on Cyber Legacy. Yeah. Uh, uh oh, now the turn on the storm. They force the BKB and they turn it back on the magical. A little back and forth there, but it's definitely Khan that come out ahead. Big Num gonna get caught as well as the Beastmaster, it looks like. Not gonna be able to chase down the Beast. Good time to take a fight for Khan. All right. Hey, that's something. Yeah, that was nice. I mean, the Storm ball in. Uh, BKB, I think that was the first BKB. Yeah, it was. Okay, they're gonna get Excel. So one for two, killing a support and uh, also getting a kill on the Void Spirit. I mean, that's big because the Void Spirit is a lot of their reach in this game. Radiance and when he's dead, tower. you feel a lot attack. safer to pretty much occupy Dyer's any space on the map tower. if you're calm. They're going to be trading Dyer's a tier two for a tier one though. And I can't believe it's towers. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not even going to die. DB's here. That feels so bad, actually, that they can't even kill that tower. Yeah, it was just a free tier two up top. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Find magical again. Whoops, just a freebie. Yeah, I was admiring the necro units up top. My bad. Yeah, he he didn't uh, see it coming either. Don't worry. They were just sitting on top of the hill, and he just walked right into them. They just read what he was gonna do when he respawned. The map they saw that bottom was pretty much the only push lane. And they just said, you know what? There's a good chance he's just going to TP here when he respawns. And he did. He just eats another death. Sure, Cat continuing to farm. Guardian Grease up next. He's also carrying around Squiddles, one of my favorite cosmetics. Big fan. You see that little green trail that Squiddles leaves? I remember Radiant's thinking like, damn, that's so cool. Attack. Look at all the particles. That was eight years ago. Yeah, it was like one of the first cosmetics, right? It was one of the first ones that left a trail like that, at least that I remember. And I, I just, I remember being blown away by it, like a kid. Kid at the candy shop. Yeah. Merlini gave me my first squiddles. I'll treasure it forever. That's dope. Ben never gave me any. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. I, uh, I, well, I did live with him, so you know. Yeah, that's fair. Too. <laughs> all right, here we go. CL, push it out. Tier one, all right, and again, Magical jumps out for it, and he gets put to rest. 
Ravage, Hunt, the whole kitchen sink. BKB from Dream, of his jump onto the Tiny, but now Storm, saved by a swap, stolen Primal Roar. Chain Frost bouncing around, but they get a big kill on Petty Sara. Big Numb also in trouble, three for nil thus far. Cyber Legacy in big trouble. Buyback now from Tiny as Cheshire Cat gets into the tower. Big Numb with the toss, and looks like they'll get a counter kill on the Tide. Oh, no! 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 no. Get the oh. hell out of here! Whew, you'd love to see it. You'd love to right, see you the should backstory. see if you could get that uh, that squiddles there, Draskal. That thing's good luck or something. Yeah, that was crazy. My god. I see you later, dude. I didn't think he would be able to fog him for that long, but... Just enough time. I can't... Wait, what? What's... I don't... Yeah, I was gonna say, he could definitely use some magic resistance this game. Like, the tiny combo is definitely hurting him a lot. Like, it's getting him below half, and that's already, like... Pretty scary range to be in if you're a tight hunter and you need to be able to frontline for your team. Well, he wants Halberd instead, so not gonna take heed to your advice on that one. I mean, raw HP is okay. Um, Halberd isn't bad against TB by any means. Being able to disarm him is great, but it now feels smoke. like yeah, it feels like fighting around the TB is what's been working for them. So if they want to disarm him and just kill the all the, all the other heroes and leave the TB for last, that's fine. And that's not a bad strategy at all. Cheshire Cat. Oh, he blinks. Amazing. You know, you do these smokes and you just like... You basically reveal your smoke in a way where the heroes that can't jump are in the front. And that just feels like super bad to see. Like normally when you smoke like that, you want the heroes with the longest reach in front, or at least like the quickest way to get in, because that way you have the lowest probability of what just happened to them happening to them. Basically, that was not a very well executed smoke. <laughs> see. What a weird game this has turned into. Like Connor actually clawing their way back. They've got the XP lead now. They've actually got the win percent advantage. Yeah, they'll they'll win the late game for sure. Like Storm becomes an absolute monster. And the thing about TB is that TB is great when your team can fight around you, but his team can't fight around him during the late game. The Spectre is going to isolate heroes like Lich and Tiny, and they're just going to die. Like they, these heroes can't live through a late game haunt, you know, even with a glimmer cape, there just needs to be like one sentry or a dust anywhere, and, and these heroes are just dead to rights. No, they Hello, TB, he's not gonna do it. Yeah. They, he, they need more. The mobility becomes a real issue after a while. That's the problem with Terrorblade. He does the damage, but that, it's always the issue with this hero. How do you keep them close enough, right? You pop meta, everybody runs away. That's why that weird agonims didn't make so didn't, didn't make any sense to me. It's like, hey, I pop my ult and everybody runs away. Like, ah, oh, it's kind of what I wanted to do anyway. And they can just run circles around him. That's the... You know, when I say raid boss, I mean damage, but I usually say that to also mean kind of immobile. You know, I think of, like, Dusa without Radiant boots. That's a raid boss. Yeah, he definitely suffers from the old uh, concrete feet syndrome. Concrete feet. That's good. Yep. That was a Radiant phrase we used in a while with people who didn't move attack. out of shit. Wow. Such like, a wordsmith. Yeah, concrete feet, man. They're, we used to uh, just say, don't stand and fire, you fucking R word. <laughs> Uh, early WoW. Similar times. <laughs> People were much meaner back then. Yeah. Yes. Especially when it came to raiding. Yeah, there was a... We had a tank in our guild. We were doing BWL. Doing Veil. You know, we have to, like, taunt chain and turn him and shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of our tanks just literally would never move. <laughs> like, we would have to move the whole raid. It was uh, interesting <laughs> times. Wow, that's some serious... Bro, it was, it was literally like 15 years ago. I don't move. Everyone... The raid moves around me for I am the main tank. <laughs> what, a, what a dope mentality. That was basically what it was, dude. It was wild. <laughs> oh, my. Hey, a smoke. What are we doing here, Cyber Legacy? Catching Pikachu. All right. Can they get this kill, though? They need a little more of the taunt. The swap. They don't have it. The Primal Roar onto Excel. The Venge again. The sacrificial lamb keeping her core alive. Really nice swap. Good save. Good save. TB is Take really accelerating. Look how much faster he's farming than everyone else. He's now a full item up on Spectre, by the way. Yeah, but that's that's kind of compounding the issue, right? Like if, if we think about what we just talked about and how yeah. the TB is the guy who's going to get kited, then does the net worth on this hero really matter in the grand scheme of things? Because he's 
not only is he getting like more than anyone else on the enemy team, he's also taking away farm from his own team. Um, Pikachu is going to find a kill on the big num. So yes, the PB has to farm, but it's... Is there anything here? BKB? No. Uh, nope. No, no roar. Primer roar. Yeah. But uh, it, it goes back to like the Naga effect, right? You choke out your own team. Yep. You take their farm away to give it to yourself, and then if that hero cannot solo win the game, then it doesn't it, it doesn't uh, give you a better chance of winning the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it is necessary for him to farm, but it's like a catch-22. It's like this weird balance where you want him to accelerate really fast, but there, there's this wall that comes where it's sort of like diminishing returns on the sixth item for Terra Blade relative to one of your supports having that Glimmer Cape or like that save item, you know, like... The second item on a support might be better than the sixth item on Terra Blade. Yeah, that can be true in a lot of games, yeah. actually. And and one player and two players just they normally don't think that way, um, oh. but it can be true. No BKB on Storm. They've got the Glimmer Cape. There's actually a little window here to try and kill him. Double damage tree on Terra Blade. Also, this is scary. Oh They've got goodness. the taunt. No buyback. Oh, buyback. Oh, oh yikes. No, this could be scary. There is an Aegis on TB right now. Still some time on that double damage. It's like about 15 seconds. There's the uh, glyph. They could just throw it on. Now, they don't know he doesn't have buyback. It is gold, not timer. Yeah, but they can find out just by walking up a bit, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah they can certainly test it. But it is scary to overcommit against the storm buyback, too. Like, that is yeah, one of gonna... buyback that can get you. They're gonna play it safe. I like uh, this. Vlad Zora, Paladin Sword, and stuff. The Shark Cat jumps in. He's gonna try to delay this push, but he's getting juiced. Excel with the swap. TV coming in. A few more snowballs. That should be the end of Excel. Done. Tier 3 still taking some damage. 25 seconds on the storm. Buyback from the Venge. Remember, there's no glyph. No more meta, though, either. TB now maybe a manageable force. Swap back in, pretty deep. Sunder. He's gonna make it back here, no way. They've gotta at least get him once. He's gonna try to life steal his way through. Sustains a little, but now the Aegis gets used. No BKB and Ravage here. Storm up in three, this could be the turn. Good toss. Such a Cyber good toss. Legacy trying to make it out. They'll catch the Beastmaster. Big Num also in some trouble. They're killing the Spectre though, and Naive's down. Does have the buyback. Big Num is the trade. Penny Shara also falls. Cyber Legacy. They are getting punished here. It looked good when they picked up the Spectre, but the TP's interrupted. Slayer's definitely going down, and now they're hunting for more. BKB's magical, trying to live. Pikachu needs to be careful. Cheese gets eaten. They get the counter kill onto Excel. Dream and magical actually holding steady right now. There's the BKB from Dream. That gets Cheshire Cat. Wow. Dude, someone tipped this tiny. He just salvaged that whole freaking fight. He tossed the TB out to like the outskirts of the fight way in the back and the ravage is like it hit him but there was no one there so he basically gets saved because his bkb was down right if he gets ravaged there he's just dead yeah beautiful now storm uh oh no bkb again this is a big catch up to the high ground we go he lives and now this top lane gets cleared out range barracks already fallen and a pause Falls a dc a dc yeah, so that whole thing kicked off uh, a couple of things. One, the core and the support need to communicate. Like, if you're going to be farming like that with no buyback, you need to be like, Excel, please God be behind me always. Because if you die in that situation, you just saw the result. You know, no buyback right in front of your base. Like, obviously, if he knew they were there, he wouldn't stand there, but that's why you need the Venge. It's, it's an insurance policy to make sure that worst case scenario is you just are down a Venge instead of down your mid player. So that was a bit odd that they kind of, you know, let that happen. But, um, you know, obviously really good play from uh, Cyber Legacy. They had the DD rune on the TB and they made use of the Aegis. Um, and they're probably going to end up getting at least this top racks out of it, I would assume. I, I mean, if they want to use buybacks for this, they can, but it doesn't really... I don't know. It's, it's hard to justify buying back in a situation as Tide, for example, or Spectre because you don't have an ult and... Like, even if you do, there's no guarantee that you're going to kill uh, kill both of them. You, you might kill Dream, 
because he doesn't have a zombie kibia. yet. Banking that they just finish off this barracks and retreat, and then you're totally fine. And I mean, if they use one buyback, they will for sure run. Like, absolutely, they will run. I think they'll run from just a tide here. Yeah, they're gonna run yeah, anyway. because okay. they're they're scared of storm, and they know that Dream doesn't have BKB. That's why. All right, play it safe. Cyber Legacy. I mean, you, you're happy with the kills, right? Like, that fight could have gone a lot worse. That Ravage connects, and uh, you could have had a dead TB and a whole dead team there. All these fights are so back and forth, though. At first, I thought, okay, Khan has a big opening here, and then Spectre way over commits and ends up dying. And then that starts this chain reaction where it kind of swings again. That almost felt like back two fights where Cyber Legacy sort of won both. Well, they did have the use of the Aegis there, and cheese. Yes. Like, they, they consumed the boat. Uh, Magical used the cheese. If he didn't have it, he was dead. Um, obviously, Dream would have died, too. But they also wouldn't have stuck around if they didn't have the spoils, also. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe they would have just went for mid after they got I, that I, one kill. I got on the vibe. Like, the way TB was playing that top lane, especially, it, it, after he got swapped, for sure. But he was playing kind of like, yeah, I'm cool to lose the Aegis here. But let's go. Like, he was really not playing the... Um, maintain longevity on that second life. Prince's knife comes out for the storm. Silver Edge here on TV. Ooh. Spectre is gonna melt, by the way. I like this item is a late game counter to Spectre. Ravage for Cheshire Cat to start things up. That is gonna set up a kill onto the Beastmaster, maybe even the Lich. Not the fight the Radiant wanted. A great catch from Khan. Buyback already from the Lich. Well, that's one way to that's use your team uh, fight. That's what Vision Superiority gets you. They had wards up in their jungle preemptively when uh, Cyber Legacy were making their foray into that side of the map. They saw all of them. There was no sentry placement or anything from Cyber Legacy, so they had the perfect like angle of attack, if you want to call it that. They knew how to approach and, uh, well, the quick couple of kills and the uh, forced buyback from the Lich. I don't actually know why he bought back. Roshan's not up. Yeah, I don't know if he thought that it was going to be a long chase. To be fair, they do have a tier 1 tower still standing in mid, so there is an access point for him to TP to if that did end up being another one of these long fights. So... I think as soon as that Ravage hits, lose like your beast. It's just... Can't. Yeah, I don't know. Certainly ambitious. Okay, Excel. Hit. Execution. It's a round one knockout right there. Dude, why didn't he just play TB the whole series? First phase this hero. Stop first phasing Void. You're asking it's the right tremendous. questions. I don't have the answer. I feel like this hero is so much... There's like so much less pressure on you for... I mean, obviously there's like Phoenixes and Zeus and Lee. Yeah, but like in general, if you biff a meta, it's like, oh, let's go back to farming. Void's a little more... All right, I biffed a Chrono. Let's go, boys! It's time to pound him into the ground. Like, it, it, TB's just a little easier, I think. You're, you're kind of just I mean, doing it, your thing. It's my belief that you shouldn't first phase any one position, like ever, uh, unless you have some crazy plan, but... See what happens here. DKB pops from Dream, turns on an IE. There's the break, but won't be able to chase him down. And that top lane's already dead. There is a glyph for the Dire available. Now the Haunt. Of course, there's no Aegis. The Dire's starting to push out. They want Dream. He's already sundered. Now the Chain Frost will start bouncing. Dream is sustaining. They do finally kill him, but the Dire's so low. The Chain Frost bouncing all around. Both sides trying to clean up the buyback from the storm, helping out a lot as well. But Naive gets finished off by Big Num. Another ridiculously messy fight. And down bottom, it's some support on support action. Looks like Gilger will get finished off. But now Storm comes in for the cleanup. Pikachu low on mana. He's the only one alive, but does have the Venge Illusion. That's a flicker from the Beastmaster to get out there. That was a really lucky direction to go. It was. It looked like a blink dagger at first, the, the way it was placed. Yeah. All right, so uh, and that was a win for Cyber Legacy. Storm did have to buy back there. That was so odd, though. Did you see it? Dream sundered his Void Spirit. Is that what? I, it all he happened sundered so him fast, for right? HP when he had three heroes of Khan just in melee range of him. 
Okay, so that, that explains why really the Void weird. Spirit. It did seem like it turned pretty bad for Cyber Legacy all of a sudden. I mean, he was on the ramp. Perhaps he didn't have vision of all the heroes? I don't know, dude. It seems very unlikely that... Maybe he thought his turn time was going to kill him. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm grasping at straws here. That was just a really weird situation. I mean, it could have just been a little bit of a misclick between, like, the Spectre and all the other shit. He was, shit. like, the only one who was there. Yeah. Like, if you can uh, imagine, there were, like, four heroes fighting on the ramp, and then, like, you know, max Dyer's range from that to the from south Dyer's was where the Void Spirit was. So, I don't know. It Maybe it was vision. That that would be the best explanation, right? Yeah, it, it might have been. And you just panic to try to live. So, it's, so, it's such a weird game now. It's like Khan did lose the melee barracks up top, but they hold the tier three with plenty of extra health. And now Pikachu has hit 25. And this is where things start to get weird. Storm can now shove out waves so stupidly easily, relatively low risk. You can hold Megas with this uh, this Storm talent. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, incredible utility, lots of damage. You can even kill people with it if they're not paying attention. Uh, we have a saying when I play is, uh, Ball does damage. Does lots of damage. So, if you hit a long distance and you get a couple of remnants on top of them too, even the, the tank here, like 2k HP heroes can die to that. And it also... There's this other weird dynamic that happens where sometimes it's easier to just defend one lane compared to when you're trying to defend two at once and they're splitting you up. Like you have one focal point that you have to go all in to defend and sometimes that can make it a little bit easier for the defending team. Like just having one objective that you have to worry about. Yeah. It's a little oxymoron, but yeah, it's like, it's just less variable. So it makes it easier to focus. But uh, feeling pretty rough for the 80-20 is what Dota Plus says right now. Of course, uh, in favor of Cyber, Cyber Legacy. 20 is pretty, uh, pretty good, actually, given that they're down two racks. Spectre Storm, man. They're going to catch the Beastmaster. There were two potential engagements breaking out, but it's the top one that matters. Beastmaster buys back. That's tier one tower. Nice access point as Lich gets low. Slayer's dead. Chainfrost did a surprising amount of damage, but now the Ravage connects on four. Stolen Ravage. No, that's a second Ravage. My bad. Now Big Num's in some trouble. Kedu's already died, but they do get the kill onto Pikachu. Buyback from Tiny now. That's two minutes on the sideline without Storm. They can still fight them if they want to. They have buyback haunt on Spectre, so... I mean, so far it's a win for Khan, but now they're gonna get punished pretty hard. Excel low, Naive needs to live here, and he will not. Does have buyback. But all of a sudden, it tips back for CL. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't realize Tide had a refresher. Of course, Rubik and Tide are on the same team. So it was not a stolen Ravage. Uh, Magical, though, gets caught. There's the buyback haunt. This is what gets scary with Spectre. Now, buyback on the Venge, and also the Void Spirit. That is down soon. They need to get out of here. Dream's walking up to the high ground, dude! He's got Satanic. He might be able to live with this. A lot on the line here. Naive, very low. Dream now on full HP. Raider trying to hit the Tiny in the back line. Rubik, the only one with buyback left. Everyone gonna be stuck on the sideline. Die back for Tiny now, but the Tide, broken, low. He's done for 100. A three for two left on the map, but one of them is Dream. TB is such a silly hero. Having two ultimates is pretty cool. Has fallen. Oh, he's trying to clip him, I guess? I don't... Do you even want him up there with you, Gilgi? Yeah, I don't know. We're playing with fire here, buddy. Gilg? Oh, no. Gilgi? That was... Gilgs. Oh, boy. All right. So, um, every buyback is on cooldown except TB and Tide. They are both short a couple hundred gold, and Lich has his cooling down in just about 20 seconds. I mean, seconds. this is free Roche. They can't do anything about this. Their Spectre's stuck defending base. Yeah. The wave clear heroes are dead, so oh. they're, there's, like, no way they're getting out of the base, right? And they lost their second tier four. So now you have zero safety structures. It's just thrown. Ancient yeah, this is looking a little rough. There is a butterfly now on the Spectre. It's a nice survivability slash damage item, I suppose. Oh, um, but Draskull, that was an Aghanim Scepter on the Roche, and guess who they gave it to? 
Oh, they gave it to TV. They sure did. Are you excited about this? Are you ready to see Terra Wave, buddy? I don't think I've ever seen it in a pro game, so yeah, kind of. I think I've seen it once. Trent and I saw it in a game where there were Terra Blade and Puck on the same team. That was cool. Puck oh, got Agonims, cool. and uh, they got a couple sick tether snaps. Only time I've seen it, and obviously that specific synergy makes a lot of sense. Did and gotta... also, situations like this where it's like, I wouldn't buy that shit, but if you're going to give it to me, I mean, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it definitely has really high value, especially in later game situations. Like, every form of CC becomes more powerful just because of how much damage scaling there is. Like, it's way easier to deal damage than it is to be tanky enough to live, if that makes sense. Like, there's a lot of items that just are built specifically to kill, you know, mm -hmm. any sort of tanky hero. It's, uh, it's a handy little save. We'll see if it actually uh, makes a difference in the fights. I mean, most likely what we'll see is him just popping meta to hit the tower like normal, and it won't be that. Well, so it's different now, though, Dresco. Don't forget, it's its own spell. They buffed it. So when he goes oh, into meta, right. he they gets an additional it. skill. Yeah, that's why I'm so hyped for it, because it used to be completely yeah, shitty. Forgot. It used now, to be the one that just triggered off his meta, right? Exactly. And that's why it was so counterintuitive, because it's like, wait, no, I want to hit him right when I pop meta. I'm never using meta to survive. Now you can use meta however, and then you just get this basically terrorize yeah, around that's, that's way better. Yeah, it has a long cooldown, though. It's like 100 seconds or something, so you only get it once. But keep an eye out. Double damage on TP, as you mentioned, the Moon Shard. No buybacks available. They, they, if they wait, they, they just make it. They gotta go. They gotta go. Flip. There's the Haunt. Back line. Ravage comes out. They want Magical, but he's got an Eon Disc. Second Ravage, not gonna do much as Cheshire Catfall. The big fight's on the backside. It's the Storm Spirit. Wow. You know, I, I was looking at that fight from like what Terra Blade was looking at, and like Storm just went in there. That was high risk, high reward, I guess. But yeah, whew. I mean, it's if the TB gets the hit. I mean, he obviously had another double damage. So. That was what the mid push he had a DD, and that push bottom he had a DD as well. Pretty uh, 